Your nearest Palmer's Garden Centre or shop online at palmers.co.nz. News Talk ZB Weather Watch 24 7 with Mercedes Benz Botany. Guarantee your future value with Agility Finance. Monaco, westerly 15 knots, rising to 20, gusting 30 this morning. And a strong wind advisory, Waitamata, the Hodaki Gulf, Bremhead to Cape Colville. High tide at Auckland, quarter past 10 this morning, and at Onihunga, 1 30 this afternoon. Auckland today, cloudy periods with patchy morning drizzle, then rain for a time in the evening, possibly heavy. Also, westerlies becoming strong in the afternoon. Tomorrow, isolated early showers, then fine. Today's high 19. Currently, we're sitting on 14 here at News Talk ZB. Christopher Luxon in the hot seat. It's the Leaders' Breakfast on the Mike Hosking Breakfast with the Land Rover Defender 130. Adventure now seats eight. News Talk ZB. Morning, it is seven past seven, so here we go. Once every three years, sit down with the person who wants to be Prime Minister. Over the next two hours, the plan is to answer your questions. To explain the policy and ideas behind what will drive their government, uh, this isn't a debate, it's a conversation. Uh, there is time for detail and hopefully plenty of illumination that you might not get in other formats. Your questions are welcome. Uh, we'll keep the political bagging to a minimum and focus on policy, agendas and ideology. And this morning, the leader of the National Party, Chris Luxon, is with us. Very good morning to you. G'day, Mike. How are you? I'm very well indeed. If you get COVID... Will you isolate for five days? Uh, yeah, I'd isolate till I got a negative test. Why? Uh, because I think it's not inappropriate, sort of wandering around, sort of um, spreading it around to everybody Even else. Even if you felt well? Yeah, look, I mean, um, I just would wait till I got a negative test. You know, it's pretty simple. Okay, the fiscal... And I actually think that should be what it should be now anyway. So right? you want to make a rule? So when you become government, we're going back to five days. <laughs> five no, we're not lockdowns. doing that. We're not doing that. But people should be able to self-manage, you know, work themselves out right now. I mean, you know, take a direct test. You know, if you're, if you're negative, then carry on. If you're feeling asymptomatic, you know, I think it's... So, so would you think less of me if I had COVID right now and I came in anyway because this is an important morning and I feel quite well? Uh, well, personally, I'm not too worried about it. Um, but um, I, for my Myself, I'd just be saying I got it the second time and I, first time I didn't even know I had it second time I actually felt bad for three days and then once I got a negative test I wanted to get back to work but I couldn't because I had a seven day isolation period at that time Do you have a pandemic plan in your series of policies? Um, well we, we, we don't have a specific pandemic plan but I mean emergency management and response is going to be critical in government and I think there's a big opportunity for us to upgrade our emergency responses across a number of things whether it's um, earthquakes, natural disasters, pandemics um, I think that's just one of the things you should be doing is, is risk management and we used to do it in the airline a lot, we used to practice scenarios we used to be really thinking about you know back backup plans to backup plans. Um, I just want to see what that capability looks like in New Zealand, frankly, in government, because sadly we are going to have more issues going forward and emergencies, and I want to see that we keep improving that capability to respond. The fiscal policy you put out Friday, you, mm. what, what struck me is you're extremely limited. As much as you might like to do, yep. you can't. Yeah, because these guys have gone and created a series of fiscal cliffs where they didn't actually fund programs beyond a certain period in the four-year cycle. Uh, think school lunches, think, um, you know, what was the other farm act stuff, for example. And the other bit is uh, Robertson has actually raided next year's budgets quite a lot. That's a new thing that he started doing. Uh, and as a result, you're quite limited in that first two years or that four-year period. So how do you sell yourself? Uh, well, I mean, we actually put together a more balanced plan, which actually says, look, we are going to... It doesn't tell me anything, is my point. You get to surplus slightly faster. Whip we get, actually whip, get to whip, surplus whip on the same do. window uh, yeah. with a bit more. And it's, uh, it's, 800, yep. it's $800 million. Correct. Uh, yeah. What we've learned from COVID and forecasts, that $800 million could be $2.7 billion or it could be minus $2 yep. billion. Yep, yep, exactly. So all we've got to do is try and find the balance, but we are quite constrained in that first year and a half in particular. And that obviously limits our ability to, you know, what we're going to say is, look, we're going to spend slightly less. Uh, we're actually going to get back to uh, surplus about the same time, but with slightly more surplus, and we've got to pay down a little bit more debt. But the bottom line is that you've got to have consistent year in, year in, you know, year out good fiscal management, and that's what's not happened. I mean, these guys actually, I don't believe the numbers that they've got on the paper anyway because they've never delivered them for six years. Uh, so the counterfactual is well, they ain't hitting those numbers uh, as it is as it currently stands. Robertson's never done it. Um, and for me, it's just about finding that balance of, right, how do I get rid of the back office bureaucracy and actually try and get that money recycled yep. to the front line, all that kind of stuff. I'll come to that in just a couple of moments. But if I'm looking for revolution, yep. why am I voting for you? Well, what you, you, look the same really as, you look the same as Labour. No, I disagree. I think what you're going to get is really good economic management because that's what we do. I mean, that's what we do. I mean, there is insane amount of spending going on in this government. 
There's only two numbers I reckon that New Zealanders need to understand. The 80% increase in government spending and the $100 billion worth of debt. And I think when you tell Kiwis that, they're absolutely shocked. We've gone from $5 billion to $100 billion. Mm. We've gone from 80% spending. You've got a government spending more, taxing more, borrowing more, and we've got nothing to show for it. Nothing. We haven't got extra ICU beds after a $60 billion worth of COVID spend. We haven't got extra roads. We haven't got extra anything for all of that borrowing, for all of that spending. Nothing. Why Everything don't you is... kill all the spending then? Why, why are you well, doing 6.5% we'll... through the public service? Why don't you do 26.5% through well, the public we're gonna, service? Well, we'll start at 6.5% and we'll go through it. And So you're starting at 6.5%, there's well, more after that. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be in a disciplined mindset. To, uh, well, the, the problem is this, is that these guys measure success on how much money they spend. We measure success on outcomes. And if you run a business, you actually lay up the KPIs, the measures of what you're trying to deliver. You have everybody being crystal clear about what they are. So everyone going to that Ministry of Health today knows that they're there to improve child immunisation rates, to shorten up the wait times for ED departments, get first surgeries, first specialists. You want clarity on all of those outcomes. And then you want everyone ruthlessly driving towards it and stop all the dumb stuff that doesn't add to that. Okay. Um, this morning's issue, if you were in Cabinet, Rua who are coming to you for more money. Again, apparently they're going to run out of cash after a fantastic snow season. You've already bailed them out once. Yep. They want more. They run out of money in November. Do you give it to them? Uh, at some point, they've got to run it on commercial terms, and there's got to be... So as of, as of, if you're in government this morning, Rua who can come to you as they will to the Cabinet meeting today and ask for more money. Your answer is no. Well, my, 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 I've been very supportive of actually giving them some help in this current season because I actually think it's a critical tourism asset for New Zealand. But ultimately, that has to be solved by commercial interest. I'm not close enough to know what those negotiations look like or who's involved. Or But as of this morning, the, the answer from you would be no. You, um, you've done your bit. It's over. Yeah, we've, I think that would be basically where I'd be heading. Yep. Okay. Do ministries go or not? When you talk about your 6.5% of the public service, do actual ministries disappear? Or does everyone just get to wander around and have fewer people? No, I think... I think There'll be, I think there'll be constant evolution of that. What's the right cluster of activities that make sense to form a ministry, for example? Uh, I observe that there's quite a, you know, so I think we'll, we'll look at that. But I don't actually, I think the big thing for me is actually just stop the waste. Stop the 200 communications consultants at, you know, Health New Zealand and actually get them out to be 200 nurses. You know, how do you get the money out of the back, of, your back yep. office? And but all the ministries as they stand at the moment, the myriad of ministries yep. will, will survive. There isn't, there isn't a, re- you can't mount an argument you, for you, a single ministry that goes goes, actually, we could live without you completely. Um, they're, they're, um, nothing comes to mind per, per se, but what I'd say to you is that there are things that I would like to think about. Is that the right clustering of ministries that go together? MB, for example, has added you know, half a billion dollars worth of spend. I think it's added two and a half thousand extra people. And you'd have to say, have the outcomes got any better? And so the question is, well, what the hell's in it? And is it actually working? And is it actually functioning? And is there too much cost sitting, supporting a whole bunch of sub-activities within MB, for example? Um, so I think you'd want to just say, as a new government coming in, what is the natural clustering or grouping of activities that should be sort of aligned and working together uh, from, an op- from an operating model point of view? But um, from my point of view, you know, by and large, the activities there is the right activity that a country has to deliver. But the question is, it's all about management. And you know, my personal experience is CEOs get different results with different management using the mm. same amount of money. And so it's what you do with it and expectations and clarity and bringing in all those CEOs before Christmas and saying, hang on, here's the new deal. The deal is you have to deliver. You cannot, de- you have to deliver. You know, that's what I'm sick of. I just am absolutely sick of actually all the talk and no action. All right. We'll come back and get some of your questions and more on the public service in just a couple of moments. 15 past seven. The NZ Superstock Team Chance is coming up, and you could be going with eight VIP experiences up for grabs. So get registered online now for your chance to win. This election, only a party vote for national can change the government, strengthen our economy, lower your cost of living, and deliver you tax relief. Party vote national, and let's get our country back on track. Authorised by Jadiju, 41 Pipitia Street, Wellington. Trade Depot. Stop paying over-the-top prices. Save thousands by shopping online at Trade Depot. Luxurious freestanding bathtubs, just $7.99. Designer vanities, just $5.99. Back-to-wall toilets, just $2.79. LED mirrors, just $1.79. Save thousands on renovations. Shop online now at Trade Depot or visit the massive Trade Depot store in Onihunga. Trade Depot. 
this rate, everyone should be interested in an Exceda finance term deposit. 7.5% for 12 months. Exceda's rates are above what you can expect from the banks. So lock in a premium term deposit rate today and exceed your expectations at xceda.co.nz. Exceda Finance. How can we help you? Licensed by the Reserve Bank of New Zealand. Term deposits are offered pursuant to a product disclosure statement available on our website. T's and C's apply. AES are Auckland's air conditioning experts and we're celebrating Oktoberfest with our hottest deals on air conditioning. Pay from just $6,499 for a Panasonic S60 PE ducted aircon system including standard installation. T's and C's apply. Book your free home consultation today. Call AES on 0800 337 123 or visit aes.co.nz. With the wind in your hair, the salt on your skin and the sun on your face, there has never been a better time to consider moving to your dream coastal destination. Discover Northland's hidden gem, Marsden Cove. Only 30 minutes drive south of Whangarei is Hopper Development's unique waterways destination. Waterfront living has never been more attractive. With beaches abound, marina, cafes, supermarket, medical centre and more, why look anywhere else? Sections are available now. For more info, visit marsdencove.co.nz. Feel the Lego love these school holidays at The Warehouse. It's buy one, get one half price on selected sets across Lego Friends, Lego Duplo, Lego Classic and Lego Ninjago. Create a family fun for less at The Warehouse. Conditions apply. News Talk ZB, this is the Leaders Breakfast, 17 minutes past 7. Uh, we'll sprinkle your questions in throughout the morning, and they may get repeated depending on how this morning goes. But this is, uh, can we please ask Christopher Luxon what Nationals' policy is on taxing trusts at 39% from the first dollar of profits? That's Craig. Yeah, um, basically you want your tr- trust rate sitting with your top marginal rate, just so you, avo- you avoid tax avoidance. That's the sort of global principle. Um, so we will leave it there. For so 39, and if you drop the, 30, uh, drop the 39 to 33, we drop that which, down which you would like to, I'm yep. assuming, at, yep, some point. at some what point. What would the fiscal conditions need to be for you to go from 39 to 33? Oh, we'd need to be a hell of a lot better than where we are, and that's why we just yeah, can't but commit specifically. to Specifically? Um, I mean, well, look, I mean, it, I, I haven't thought... You that. don't see it in the first term? No, we definitely don't see it in the first term. That's the reality of where we sit today. So 39 cents, yep, we didn't support it. Yes, we'd love to get rid of it, but the reality is we can't afford to get rid of it okay. uh, at this stage, and as a result, you need the t- trust rate aligned with that so you avoid, you know, get, get rid of tax avoidance. The public service we were talking before the break briefly, do you have the t- talent in the public service yeah, to, deli- d- to, to deliver what you so want. So I, I think, Mike, this is the biggest thing is delivery, right? I mean, I think actually working out what to do is actually, we can all sort of have that conversation. The how we get it done is actually going to be the really big challenge here. This is a public service that's had 14,000 bureaucrats and almost $2 billion of consultancy spent. I went up to Singapore, actually, and I spent time with Prime Minister Lee. For, I was up there for two days, and I, and I spent time with him and the chief civil servant up there as well because... It's a similar size public service, but yet they deliver so much better. So how do they get better results with the same number of physical people? So I think there is talent in there, um, like every organisation, getting the right leader in the right role. But I also think there's opportunity for us to actually you know, try and think about how we might bring some talent in from outside as well to mix it up. And what I found when you're trying to do turnaround jobs and businesses around around the world, you sort of need two of your five management team changed. Uh, so you actually get some different thinking in place. Um, and, you know, I think there's, you know, I'd like to make the appeal to people across New Zealand or in the private sector to say, well, listen, if you want to do something really good for your country, do what I did, come off the sidelines and go into the So what I'm reading there is there's some senior people in the public service who are going to be looking for work, not just phone we, savings, I, but I, based I, on performance. I want performance. And I am going to be tying CEO pay to delivery and performance um, very strongly. And I'm going to put better public service targets back across the whole of the public service. I do not want people. I mean, the stories are profound. I was up in Upper Hutt with Chris Bishop having a coffee. A couple pulled up to me, wanted a selfie, came in. I said, what do you do? They said, they both work at government departments, but we've actually formed our own consultancy from home. And we now serve those government departments. So that, that's the sort of nutty stuff that's going on. And when you get even public servants coming to tell you this thing's nuts and it doesn't work, there's a problem. So, you know, the CEOs need to understand you're the CEOs of large organisations. You set the tone from the top. A good leader changes everything. And so that's why I'm saying clear public service targets, hold CEOs accountable. Organisations will actually get aligned to those 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 things. Is Adrian all looking for work? 
Um, well, again, my frustration on that, I thought Robertson was pretty unfair signing him up for five years. We want to do a review of the Reserve Bank's actions because, I mean, here's, here's the basic guts of it, right? These guys came in and they were the second biggest spenders per capita of government spending in the world, 80% increase. At the same time, or then was the fourth biggest printer of cash in the world. We shut the joint down like no one else did ever. And as a result, all of that created massive asset price inflation, infl- domestic inflation. Then or takes his foot off the accelerator plant and on the brakes, interest rates go up, all of a sudden the economy goes into recession or no growth, and then you get the risk of rising unemployment. And that is the pattern from the 70s and 80s that we have forgotten economic history, Mm. right? That is as simple as it gets. And that's why I'm quite frustrated because when I took over, I remember saying, guys, there are amber lights on this dashboard economically about inflation. You should make adjustments now. Why is he in work then? Um, well, the point is I want to do a full review of the Reserve yeah, Bank. review with a view to what? Well, understand what, what, what role. Well, I you've think, just explained what they did. Well, I think they, I think they, they, fire I think they made it worse. Exactly, I think they made the cost of living There's no question they worse, made it right? worse. Why is he still in work? Well, he's there for five years because Robertson signed him up. I think he should have done what English did, which was actually out? say. Why don't you pay him out? Would, would New Zealanders, if you wrote the rest of his contract off and said, mate, I'm sorry, you failed, you're gone. Yep, well there will, there will be, I'd sooner get good leaders in to, across the whole of the public service and we'll have that conversation when we get there. I'll throw a couple more names at you in a moment. 721. <laughs> News Talk ZB Auckland. Time saver traffic. Let Ellerslie events be your Christmas party helpers this year. Good morning. Now the Southern Motorway moderate to heavy city bound East Tamaki through to Newmarket northwestern moderate to heavy coming in from St Luke's. The Northern Motorway moderate to heavy in patches city bound Sunny Nook through to Oniwa. No delays on the southwestern. Celebrate the year that was the easy way. Visit ellersleyevents.co.nz Ivanka Zonich for Time Saver Traffic. Stop by New World to try a new dinner recipe this week with pork leg roast bone in $9.49 per kilo and telegraph cucumbers $2.99 each. Now that's new world value. Sizes and exclusions apply. You're on a narrow platform. Your palms are sweaty. Your pulse is racing. But you got this. It's just a little walk outside. Nearly 200 metres up. Take a skywalk and feel it. Sky City. The 100% electric ID4 and ID5 have arrived at Giltrap Volkswagen. With incredible design and groundbreaking electric performance, the new ID4 and ID5 combine SUV usability with the sustainability of an EV. Discover a revolutionary way to drive in the next generation of Volkswagen. To get started on your electric journey, visit Giltrap Volkswagen today. 100 Great North Road, Grey Lynn, or call 09 360 3200 to pre book your ID test drive. Harvey here from HRV with some good news for sneezing season. HRV home ventilation helps filter pollen, dust and some allergens that can cause itchy eyes, runny noses and all that sneezing. It's one more reason to ha 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 choose HRV this spring. HRV for a drier, warmer, healthier home. My pile of laundry is done in a flash at Liquid Laundromats. Make laundry day a breeze by heading to your nearest Liquid Laundromat. With over 120 locations across New Zealand, you're never far from your local Liquid Laundromat. And remember, every $100 accumulated on your Liquid card and they'll add a $5 bonus. Liquid Laundromats, open seven days a week with convenient hours to fit your busy life. Visit liquidlaundromats.com for your nearest location. Happy washing and drying. I've been using these products forever. They write, and I wouldn't be without them. It's a perfect combo for mind, mood, and body health. Uh, you can keep up the great uh, work with, um, with with the help of uh, Lester's Oil and Res V Ultimate. And uh, from about health, of course, and this is what the customers are saying, keep up the great work, team, and thank you for supplying such amazing products. Uh, we dub it, uh, dub it the Healthy Aging Pack, the Lester's Oil and the Res V Ultimate. So if you're feeling like maybe you could uh, do with some support with your energy, your joint mobility, then Lester's Oil and Res V Ultimate from about health may be able to help. Together they support your health, so you can go for walks, spend time with the grandkids and all the things you love. So order your healthy ageing pack, which already saves you, by the way, $30. But use the code BREAKFAST and you will get one month's supply of Ollie Resist free. 
This is the immune support formula, of course, 0800 399 online at abouthealth.co.nz. Read the label, take only directed as directed, but the Healthy Ageing Pack is available to you from About Health. Hosking. 7.25, uh, Christopher Luxon for the remaining hour and a half this morning. Jeez, we got, well, I think we've covered a lot, we've got a lot more, lot more to cover. Costa. Let me give you another one, Andrew Costa, why is he in work? Well, um, that'll be a decision for the new police minister on the other side. Um, you know, the reality is, I think law and order has been a disaster in this country. I mean, government's been soft on crime. It's been set from the top, frankly. So you cannot say that it's been a disaster and say what you said before, that accountability starts at the top yep. without him still it, being in work. It will, but that'll be a decision uh, on the other side for... Uh, for Would you suspect... Uh, uh, well, well, quick question on that. Would you expect all things being equal, the spokespeople you currently have, to be the ministers of those areas? Well, what I've tried to do is, you know, if you think about where we were in 2020, I gave all 33 MPs responsibilities. I have six monthly performance reviews with them. I give them all a shot to say, show me what you can do uh, in terms of the content of your policy, but also actually... I want them out of those wood panelled offices in Parliament and I measure their success by how they engage with the sectors that they're part of and the front lines uh, and then I'll make a decision on the other side. So I basically run a performance model where um, it's really clear show me what you can do. So um, the reason I'm asking that is you would have no reason to believe that Mark Mitchell won't be I reckon Mark minister. Mitchell will be our police minister and corrections minister. Will Mark Mitchell be sacking Andrew Costa? Well that'll be a decision for him but I just say to you that we want better results and better outcomes and we want the front line uh, police officers um, backed up and supported and um, that's what we're going to do. We'll talk about inflation in the next half hour of the program and what we do. Just quickly, give it to me in 30 seconds. So you heard before 7 o'clock the pay rises that are being handed out, just in Auckland, for example, mm. around the airlines. Mm. How do you hand out those pay rises and contain inflation? Um, well, I mean, the, the b- b- bottom line is, yeah, you've got to bring inflation down big time. You've got to yeah, stop the that, cost going through. And you've got you to can't get, when the yeah, wages are going up. Yeah, no, no, there's a wage inflation sort of spiral happening thing at the moment. Um, you've got to show restraint. And you've got to, that's why you've got to cut the waste out, frankly, and get the money recycled because actually, um, you know, we've got 14,000 extra public servants in there. And the question is, what are they delivering? What are they doing? All right. Get the wage break, break for the news. Christopher Luxon, uh, more in the next half hour. We'll cover off the inflation and perhaps a little more to do with the economy, but all the other subjects that you'll Expect education and health will be covered off as well. And your questions are welcome. News is next here at News Talk Z. At this rate, everyone should be interested in an Exceda finance term deposit. 7.5% for 12 months. Exceda's rates are above what you can expect from the banks. So lock in a premium term deposit rate today and exceed your expectations at xceda.co.nz. Exceda Finance. How can we help you? Licensed by the Reserve Bank of New Zealand. Term deposits are offered pursuant to a product disclosure statement available on our website. T's and C's apply. Watch as the city centre becomes the canvas this art week from October 6th to 15th. With over 50 pop-up exhibitions, galleries, laneway installations, free art walks and more, plus late night art on Thursday 12th of October. Visit heartofthecity.co.nz Hiring staff for your team or business is a never-ending nightmare, costing way too much time and money. We're all tightening our belts these days, so with zero placement fees, Join is a proven system that can save you thousands. Join's extensive network of specialist recruiters across New Zealand means you can partner with your own dedicated recruiter today. Join the hundreds of smart Kiwi businesses who use Join to hire great people. Go to join, joyn.co.nz. New Zealand has some of the world's best boating and fishing right here in our own backyard. And we all know how important it is to protect the things we love. If it goes in, on or across the water, PIC Insurance Brokers have got you covered. From dinghies to yachts, jet skis to cargo. Being on the sea is way better than going overseas. And great advice from PIC's expert marine insurance brokers can help you stay out there enjoying our little piece of paradise. PIC Insurance Brokers. Great advice that works for you. I started selling Wet and Forget to you, the home news, over 25 years ago. Since then, we've released a whole family of truly New Zealand-made products. And it's safe to say, New Zealanders roofs, driveways, patios, decks are a whole lot cleaner because of it. We pride ourselves on making products that really work. And this comes from years of us using them commercially. Hence the catch cry, our products work, you don't. We use gentle chemistry and we're insistent that nothing leaves our factory until we're totally satisfied it's ready for home use. So when you see the Wet and Forget name, you can be confident it's solid on its foundations and if we sell it, that means we make it. Therefore, we're right behind it. So, if you're not yet part of the Wet and Forget family, come into one of our 21 stores around the country stocking only the products we make and see what Wet and Forget is all about. 
Christopher Luxon on The Leader's Breakfast continues next on the Mike Hosking Breakfast with Arvida. This is News Talk ZB News. Good morning. It's 7.30. I'm Neva Reddy Manu. Nationals leader accepts his fiscal plan will mean he'll be quite constrained, but he denies those wanting big change shouldn't vote for National. Christopher Luxon told Mike Hosking, while Kiwis can't expect a revolution from him, they will get better economic management. These guys have gone and created a series of fiscal cliffs where they didn't actually fund programs beyond a certain period in the four-year cycle. Uh, think school lunches, think, um, you know, what was the other farm act stuff, for example. And Christopher Luxon says he would isolate until he returned a negative rat test if he got COVID-19. It comes after Labour leader Chris Hipkins tested positive for the disease over the weekend, vowing to wait till he tests negative before returning to the campaign trail. The National Party leader told Mike Hosking he wouldn't bring back any isolation rules if he got into government. People should be able to self-manage, you know, work themselves out right now. I mean, you know, take a rat test, you know, if you're, if you're negative, then carry on. Labour's latest pledge to invest in education is getting two thumbs up from the sector. It's promising two million hours of free literacy and math tutoring for intermediate and high school students and a training fund to help teachers. Post-Primary Teachers Association Acting President Chris Abercrombie says there are students who need this extra support. We've had a significant amount of disruption over the last few years, you know, COVID, weather disruptions, and we know consistency is really important. But Education Hub founder Dr Dr Nina Hood told Mike Hosking tutoring is effective, but this is just a band-aid. This is absolutely critical that we're making sure that teachers are teaching in ways that are effective for all students and that they've got the resourcing and support that they need. Research has found which political parties are more positive or more negative in their campaigns. The first batch of data from the NZ social media study run by Victoria University has come out. The Facebook pages of Chris, uh, Chris Hipkins rather and Christopher Luxon have focused on a mostly positive campaign. Lead researcher Dr Mona Krull says they're seeking challenger party pages go on the attack. Who actually did a lot of negative campaigning is the National Party on their page. So their polls are only shortly over 2% are positive. South Islanders and Wellingtonians should brace themselves for another day of wild weather. Nee was forecasting strong to damaging winds today. Three road snowfall warnings are also in place, namely State Highway 94, Milford Road, Crown Range Road and State Highway 8, the Lindus Pass. At least 13 people are being killed and another 14 are missing following a nightclub blaze in Spain. The fire began at 6am local time in a club in the southeast town of Mercia before spreading to two neighbouring venues. European correspondent Gavin Gray says it's being reported a 28-year-old woman sent a voice note to her mother as the tragedy unfolded. And according to one local newspaper said, Mummy, I love you, we're going to die. We don't know yet whether she survived or not. The cause of the fire is unknown. Christchurch's YMCA will become the first association to leave the Y movement and go out on its own after 161 years. The National YMCA Council says the Christchurch Trust has decided to pursue a path of its own branding and a new name and identity will be unveiled in the near future. News Talk ZB, uh, that's News Talk ZB News. <laughs> News Talk ZB Sport and the Rugby World Cup on Sky Sport. From flatline to the faintest of pulses, the Wallabies have revived their World Cup hopes. The bonus point win giving them an outside chance. Australia have beaten Portugal 34-14 for their second win at the tournament. The Wallabies found themselves 7-3 down in the 13th minute, but took the lead five minutes later. The wins moved Australia to second on 11 points in Pool C, three behind Wales but one ahead of Fiji, who play their final match against Portugal a week today. News Talk ZB's coverage of France 2023 with Harvey Norman, blackout deals on TVs, audio and home appliances. Penrith have cemented their case as the greatest NRL league team in the modern era with a record grand final comeback to secure a third straight premiership. The Panthers overturned a 16-point deficit to beat the Broncos 26-24. Halfback Nathan Cleary scored the match winner in the 78th minute. Brisbane coach Kevin Walters has tried to explain the concession of a 24-8 lead. We didn't play so well but kept ourselves in the game without offence. That maybe 
had a bit to do with it. I'm not sure. Nathan Cleary was pretty good too. And Penrith co-captain Asai Yo says Cleary's poised for NRL greatness. I reckon if you put his statistics up against absolutely any other halfback that's played at this point, he's 25, no one's done what he's done. That 20 minute period he put the team on his back and, and he's just won us our third grand final in a row. The last team to complete that feat was Parramatta in 1983. The White Ferns have won the dead rubber third one-day cricket international by six wickets via the Duckworth-Lewis method against South Africa in Durban. The hosts were dismissed for 209. The visitors reached the target with 10 balls of their 45 overs to spare. Amelia Kerr finished 100 not out. And Europe have won back golf's Ryder Cup from the United States, 16.5 points to 11.5 in Rome. I'm Andrew Alderson, and that's News Talk ZB News and Sport to 25 minutes to 8. News Talk ZB Auckland. Time saver traffic. Get cool and purify with Panasonic heat pumps. So good morning. Now we've got a moderate heavy run on the Southern Motorway City bound East Tamaki through to Newmarket. Moderate to heavy in patches on the Northern Motorway City bound Sunset Road through to Oniwa. The Northwestern moderate to heavy coming in from Rosebank. No delays on the Southwestern. Only Panasonic has Nano X Air purification. Find an installer. PanasonicAir.co.nz. <laughs> News Talk Zippy with a watch 24 7 with Mercedes Benz Botany. Guarantee your future value with Agility Finance. Monaco, westerly 15 knots, rising to 20, gusting 30 this morning, turning northwest 20, gusting 30 by the afternoon. And a strong wind advisory, Waitamata, the Hodaki Gulf, Bremen to Cape Colville. The high tide at Auckland, quarter past 10 this morning, then 20 to 11 tonight, and at Onihunga, 1.30 this afternoon. Auckland today, cloudy periods with patchy morning drizzle, then rain for a time in the evening, possibly heavy. Also westerly is becoming strong in the afternoon. Tomorrow, isolated early showers, then fine, fresh south westerlies. A high today, 19. Currently, 14. Here at News Dog ZB. Putting the hard questions to Christopher Luxon. The Leaders Breakfast on the Mike Hosking Breakfast with Bailey's Real Estate. Altogether better across residential, commercial and rural on News Talk ZB. 23 minutes away from 8. Christopher Luxon until 9. Now this time next week it is Chris Hipkins and on Thursday we'll be doing the uh, minor leaders. Meantime, back to the questions, Mike. I'm interested in the fact that Chris Luxon is not talking of co-governance anymore and hasn't restated national stand on the treaty or three waters. I think he does not. Um, he does this at his peril, as a majority of New Zealanders have had enough. I won't vote for him if he sits on the fence. Can you try and flush him out on this issue? <laughs> yeah, well, listen, um, where do we start? I mean, the first thing is we are repealing three waters. We're going to do it in the first 100 days. Uh, we're going to stop the 10 mega co-governed entities, send the assets back to local control and ownership. But look, the bigger issue on co-governance is this, is Essentially, what's happened is I think the government's done a very poor job. They've taken a word that was understood and used in a context of treaty settlements, local management of local natural resources, all of that stuff, which Chris Finlayson and Key and English did, which was all quite reasonable and I think worked quite well. We do not support the co-governance of public services at all. We've been consistent on that. We are one country. We have one system of public services. They're available to people on their needs, not their ethnicity. Uh, and actually, we're one person, one vote. And so you know, it's equal citizenship. So. The, the, the problem is the word co-governance has been taken out of one context, which was Article 2 of the treaty and actually treaty settlements uh, and the management of local natural resources by local iwi in conjunction with district and regional councils. And then you take national public goods uh, and actually that's why we're going to scrap the Māori Health Authority. That's why we're unwinding the three waters. That's why we haven't supported Māori wards. We haven't supported um, what ECANS is doing down in Canterbury. Mm. Uh, because actually the, the, the Article 3 stuff, which is actually you know, the provision of public services for the nation. Do you stop councils introducing Maori wards? Well, I want to go back to how it was, which was essentially saying it's up to a council decision to do it. But actually, if, 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 a, if, a, if the public and the council actually, you know, actually get a 5% sort of... So the way it used to work, you used to get a petition <laughs> up, if you got 5% of the... Correct. The, you would have a vote. Go so you will, you will enact that and that, that will become law Correct. once yep. again. Okay. Yep. When you talk about co-governance, the Mar- is, is it separate in your mind, the, what, what many would call the Maorification of this country? Well, it's just things like, I find it, 
uh, frustrating, for example, that we have renamed a lot of government departments uh, Māori first, uh, English not not always present. I would like to get would them back stop? to... Would that stop? Well, I would like them to get back to English first. I want them to be dual language. Te reo, that's fine, but it's got to be English first, you know, te reo second. Why? Because we've got 5.2 million people that need to navigate their government and their government isn't performing very well. And so when you genuinely have people coming up to you and saying, oh, Chris, I don't know what... Te Pukenga is versus mm. Fata Ora versus Waka Kotahi. Uh, I, I think we owe it to them to make that really clear that that is the Transport Agency, Health New Zealand, and, and the Polytechnics. And so I, I, I it's, not, it's not a, it's, it's a, it's not a major. But I mean, it's not a sure. strategic issue. But it's just saying I just think people owe it to be able to navigate their government in the language that is most commonly used, and it means that. Yes, we can have English first and, and Māori there for sure. There'll be some Māori agencies that Māori named are perfectly fine. Uh, but um, that's important, I think, to get those sort of things I, I don't right. want to get fixated on jobs, but there's been a number of people hired at the highest levels of Three Waters. If you're unwinding Three Waters, are you sacking those people, or what happens to them? Well, a lot of those, well, we may well be, but, I mean, a lot of those people, frankly, have been uh, taken out of local councils and put into these mega entities. It's the same people sometimes. Uh, but what I observe, whether it's been the polytechnics, I mean, Mike, the problem is this, is these guys have believed in centralisation and control. We believe in localism and devolution. They're quite different concepts. We think people locally should solve the problems. We should have local government. We should have local community folk involved, deploying services, all that good stuff. Whether it's been Three Waters, um, whether it's been Te Pukenga, whether it's been Health New Zealand, the DHBs, they just think building more bureaucracy in Wellington. And you end up, honestly, with layers of layers of management um, that actually aren't delivering anything, you know, and, and not, not delivering better services. OK, um, Mike, after reading National's 100-day policy, I don't see anything about repealing bright line or interest deductibility for rental property. This has me worried. No, we've already stated that that was in a different, uh, in our tax plan, to say uh, bright line gets unwind from 10 back to 2. Uh, and um, but not immediately, and not in bright line. Imme- bright li- it gets done on the annual on the tax year. Um, okay, okay. Yeah. so so it's as good as immediate. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. So that essentially, if you've bought the property before, I think it is June first, twenty twenty two, then you're all good to go. On on interest deductibility, it's an unwind over the term to get it back out. Okay, Mike. Please tell Christopher we desperately need a buy New Zealand campaign, e.g. the American carpet and schools. Are you aware of that story? Yeah, yeah, I am. I mean, the bigger would issue... you have done anything different? Because na- national should let the market speak. Yeah, well, and I mean, yet in this case, well, but they a, bit did. Frust- a bit frustrated on the wool industry in general, right? Because it's really unprofitable, hasn't got a good margin structure, and the basic problem is we haven't had enough innovation, unlike you've seen in other sectors of the primary industries. So on wool, there is actually huge opportunities. I mean. I was down at Lincoln, Mike, and it's quite interesting talking to the, the PhDs down there. They actually want to use it as a carrot. They grind it up into a talcum powder. They use it as a pigment uh, for paint or for cosmetics, um, you know, uh, makeup and foundations. Uh, that's a much better, there's lots of opportunities for wool. It's a fantastic product, but we haven't innovated and added value to it. And so we tend to be at the bulk commodity end of it. And so, yep, we can look at procurement and all that stuff. But the bottom line is the wool industry has a strategic problem, which is it actually hasn't been able to add value to get higher value out of that, out of that sector. Uh, and we need all our sectors firing. We need every single mm. thing. We are not in the luxury of turning things off. And wool is something we need to really solve for. And they, you know, we had a wool levy. It was taken away um, 20 years ago, or whenever it was. That was actually there to fund research and development to get those higher value products and services being sold. Does that come back? Well, I think we have to have to have to really innovate hard on, in that space. I mean, my frustration is that you know, if you think about our big chip problem. I've studied sort of small advanced countries for 20 years. You look at other 5 million people countries. Ireland now is twice as wealthy as New Zealand. You look at New South Wales, 30% wealthier than us. You look at Singapore, Israel, Denmark, even Finland. Um, Why are they wealthier? It comes back to five things. Do you have a world-class education system? Do you have modern, reliable infrastructure? Do you have technology and innovation uh, well embraced? A free, sort of freed up business sector without red tape and international connections. And on all five of those dimensions, those are the pillars by which we've actually got to build out a, a higher value economy, a more prosperous place. All right, more of your questions and more on growth actually in just a couple of moments. 17 to 8. Bunnings Trade has your hardscaping supplies sorted. With all the balustrades, rails, screens, glass, fencing and decking materials you need under one roof. And with bulk delivery to site, you'll get what you need and finish jobs faster. Bunnings Trade, helping business is our trade. EES are Auckland's air conditioning experts and we're celebrating Oktoberfest 
with our hottest deals on air conditioning in plenty of time for summer. Save up to 15% on a Panasonic ducted air conditioning system to cool every room in your home. Terms and conditions apply. Book your free home consultation today. Call EES on 0800 337 123 or visit ees.co.nz. Kia ora, I'm Cam from St John. In a medical emergency, a possible life-saving trip in an ambulance will cost you $98. However, with a St John Ambulance membership, you don't need to worry about that. For less than one emergency trip, you can cover your entire household for a year and concentrate on what matters, feeling better. Get peace of mind with the St John Emergency Ambulance membership from Supporter Scheme today. Call 0800 St John or visit stjohn.org.nz slash join. T's and C's and exclusions apply. Don't let hay fever get you down. Get Leverix. Leverix is a proven and effective relief for hay fever and allergies. Just one Leverix tablet can give fast relief in under an hour and lasts 24 hours. With a non-drowsy formula so you can get on with your day, get Leverix from your pharmacy today. Always read the label, users directed. If symptoms persist, see your healthcare professional. Pharma Broker Sales, Auckland. If your car breaks down, you call a mechanic. Got a sore tooth? Dentist. So to increase your residential portfolio, why not start with a property lending expert like Resumac? They do things a little betterer when it comes to real estate lending. Resumac understand that not everyone looks the same financially, so they look at the grey as well as the black and white, hopefully helping you build on your success. Resumac, the lending alternative. Fees, TCs and credit criteria will apply. It's the final days of No Limits and your massive sellout. Massive savings on thousands of products from leading brands. TVs, whiteware, computers, smartphones, small appliances, plus loads more. Price to sell out. Big brands, hot prices. Hurry, ends Tuesday at No Leaming. Conditions apply. The policies, the polls, the politicians. Every Monday from 4pm, it's The Front Bench. Heather Duplessy-Allen, Barry Soper, Phil O'Reilly and Richard Hills thrash out the big news from the campaign trail as we count down to election 2023. There's no scripts, no rules, no holding back. The Front Bench, Mondays from 4pm on News Talk ZB. Your home for election 2023. News Talk ZB, 14 minutes away from 8. It's the Leader's Breakfast. Christopher Luxon until uh, 9 o'clock this morning. I mean, we, we, we're sort of all over the place, but I want to get to this before I forget. The the airport, and you were talking about, um, I, I forget we were talking on air and off air, but at the end of the day, you look at something like the airport and the way we grow things in this country. Yeah. So you talk about the wool industry and how we have to do better. Yep. Auckland Airport, this is your area. This was your area. Explain yep. to me the gateway of the country, and this ties <laughs> in as well with tourism, yep. which is at 60% of what, what it was. pre There are other countries that are 100%, Correct. if not more. International so students, everything's ours, like that. Is it a reputational problem? Is it Air New Zealand's problem? Is it the airport's problem? What's gone wrong? Well, I think the airport is um, symptomatic of just actually abysmal approach to infrastructure development in New Zealand, like abysmal. You know, we have done a poor, poor job of that over many decades under successive governments. And what we actually need is, you know, what the Australians do it well. They have Infrastructure Australia. I think we repurpose infrastructure in New Zealand, 30-year pipeline of infrastructure projects, not just ideas, but proper projects that make a big difference. I think I want to work in a different way with local government, which is create city regional deals so that if instead of we getting, you know, if the mayor and I get booted out of our jobs, actually the projects carry on because there's too much on, off, on, off. And then you've got to have a national infrastructure agency, which is um, actually be able to attract funding and financing to do infrastructure. So uh, infrastructure is a big issue, and it's one of the five things that we've got to do to make this country wealthier and more prosperous. But actually, it's a con- it's a it's a poor approach, a tactical approach, is what we've been doing for decades. Things break, assets break down, and all of a sudden now we're splashing around trying to find the cash, mm. but we don't have proper financing mechanisms for it. We don't have proper long term master planning for it, uh, and that's been a big problem. So you know, you watch literally. You know, I always have this thing with my head. John F. Kennedy said, let's go to the moon, and nine and a half years later, they landed. They had no idea how to get there. We can't, you know, we've been doing 26 years of an eastern busway that goes six and a half kilometres from Pamua to Botany in my electorate. Stage one of a five-stage project's just been completed. I mean, that's how bad we are at doing this stuff. Why is it that a speed hump costs $330,000 to build? Well, it shouldn't cost that, because that's well, No, I know what, that, yeah. but why? Because I suspect you've got all this bureaucracy and overhead and fixed, you know, fixed costs that's been allocated out to these things, So these, right? are, So this is what 
what's important about this program, right? So this stuff is on the record, and I'll be coming back to haunt you. Oh, no, you will if, be. If, if, it's, <laughs> yeah. if it's not delivered. You'll be doing it weekly, mate. But, but, but it's $330,000. Something's profoundly wrong. Correct. So under your leadership, at least in the first three years, will you be back on this program to be able to explain to us why it got that bad and how materially yep. it's improved? Yep, yep, I will. And that's why I've come, because I actually want to get stuff done. And I know it's that's the conversation we were having earlier. The what you and I can work out about what roads to invest in and all that stuff, the how we get it done is going to be the critical part. That's what's going to deliver for Do you care where the money comes from to pay for all of this? No, one? not less, less hung up on so it. So Chinese money is happy as? I basically will have a national infrastructure agency that will actually be looking at... Here's the deal. We've actually got pools of domestic capital now with KiwiSaver funds that actually want to invest in infrastructure. If you think about the proposal that was from New Zealand Super to do light rail even, although I think it's a dumb project and we'll cancel that, uh, but, the, but the point is there's money that they want to invest in things like build-to-rent projects mm. and infrastructure projects, and they haven't been able to do that. But and at so, some but, point you're going to need foreign capital. Yeah, sure, there'll be pension funds, Canadian pension funds, there'll be sovereign wealth funds uh, out there. And we'll have the normal OIA. I think that needs a bit of overhauling as well. Right. But to make sure sensitive lands and, and national security and all that stuff, and those tests are still remaining. You're dancing around the answer a little bit. The question was simple. Is it Chinese money? Do you like Chinese money or not? Do um, you worry about the Chinese? Um, well, it's a that's a different issue. I mean, it was, it's, it? no, it's not. Why? A, I mean, well, I mean, I'll, I'll take, I want money and foreign investment so to come into the country. So you'll take Chinese money? I'll take, I'll take uh, money from f- sovereign wealth funds and pension funds if it helps us do that. But a national infrastructure agency will make that a assessment as to whether we will so they make the assessment that Chinese money is fine and we're part of Belt and Road you're cool with it as well well no Belt and Road that, that's a different thing what I'd say to you on the Chinese piece is that um, you know we have a good relationship with China we want to continue to build that relationship out we have very big concerns around some of the values um, that we stand up for rule of law human rights you know, sovereign state of nations all that good stuff um, we have to actually get out in the world and actually do business with everyone uh, and but we should have the courage to say yep we're actually going to stand up for those values but if they want to build a road, they can build a road here. Well, it's going to be contingent. That, that, that's going to have to be assessed on merit, but case by case. You know? Well, the, the case is that we've got a lot of money and we're happy to pay for it. Is that a good enough case? Well, no. Um, it's making sure that any strate- you know, that we're actually comfortable with that relationship. We're comfortable with those individuals. We've actually done due diligence on can they actually back it up and actually deliver for us. Um, there'll be a whole bunch of considerations at that, that National Infrastructure Agency, which will basically be Crown Infrastructure Partners, which has been a good part of government. They built the ultra-fast broadband network, for example. We want to scale that up. I don't want to have provincial growth funds and tourism acceleration funds. I want it all in together and actually build real capability expertise with actually who can find domestic pools of capital, international pools of capital. And yep, it might mean that we're going to open up and build a new road that's not planned for 2048, State Highway 29, but we might do that with private money and a toll. And frankly, if that means we get the infrastructure done faster and quicker and we make people's daily lives better, so be it. Christopher Lux until 9, 8 to 8. Talk ZB headlines. Luxon on what to do with the likes of the police commissioner and Reserve Bank governor. Person to person crypto sporidium transmission confirmed in Queenstown. Auckland Council saves millions by moving staff in together. A nightclub blaze in Spain kills at least 13. And in sport, mystery surrounds a Ranfurly Shield splitting in two under Hawks Bay's watch. How returning All Blacks duo can transform World Cup? You can read more at NZ Herald Premium. News Talk ZB Auckland. Time saver. So sold your complete garden health treatment. Good morning. Now the Southern Motorway moderate to heavy city bound East Tamaki through to Newmarket. North Western moderate TV coming in from Rosebank Road. The Northern Motorway city bound moderate TV in patches from Sunset Road through to Oniwa. South Western is flowing well. Don't forget the sea sold your complete garden health treatment available at Bunnings Warehouses nationwide. Ivanka Zonich for Time Saver Traffic. You can put off mowing the lawns. You can put off the dog groomer. You can put off organising the utensil drawer. You can put off emptying the dishwasher. But some things are too important to put off, like protecting your family's financial future with AA Life Insurance. Get covered with a trusted Kiwi brand, plus take out Life Cover today and receive a $100 Prezi card. Today's the day. Search AA Life Insurance now. T's and C's apply. 
Now, we all know the state of the public mental health services in this country, typified by excruciating long waiting lists, people in real need being turned away because their condition or state of mind is deemed ineligible or their symptoms not severe enough. So it's a fight to get in, basically. No surprises then that we have one of the highest youth suicide rates in the OECD. And Gumboot Friday fills this gap. It's a charity founded, of course, by Mike King. It offers anyone 25 and under instant access to counselling for free, no questions asked. So the demand for these free um, sessions is skyrocketing, as you would imagine. Last year, Gumboot Friday, it funded over 21,000 counselling sessions for our kids, and they are predicting that number to double. So plain and simple, that means they need to raise $5 million, and that's where you come in. So inexplicably, uh, they receive zero government funding, so we need to um, visit Gumboot Friday. That's one word, by the way, gumbootfriday.com, and make that donation. Remember, 100% of all donations made goes to free kids counselling and there are not many charities who can say that. So there's your address, gumbootfriday.com. Ready, set, it's holiday time thanks to BP. Win a family trip to tropical North Queensland, Australia to enjoy a week of fun in the sun and catch all the supercars action live. You'll get to enjoy the place and the race. Price includes flights, accommodation, five grand spending money, tourist experiences and supercars tickets for four. Simply swipe your AA Smart Fuel card when you spend over $40 on BP Fuel and you're in the draw to win. To find out more, head to bp.co.nz slash superholiday. Terms and conditions apply. Competition closes 14th of November 2023. The Leader's Breakfast with Christopher Luxon on the Mike Hosking Breakfast with Bailey's Real Estate on News Talk ZB. It is five minutes away from eight. Uh, not everyone around the country will have heard um, a little ad that we're running for Gumboot Friday, but um, off here you're saying you will. Yeah, look, I mean, the problem of mental health is we supported this government on the $1.9 billion that they wanted to spend on it. And it turned out when they did the investigation, it didn't improve any access to any services and no one seems to know where the money kind of went, right? I suspect most of it lost in bureaucracy in Wellington. So the, the model here has to be, A, I want to have a dedicated mental health minister around that table because actually I think it's been a second class issue. We have good, you know, dealt with the stigma issues, but access is a problem. You need to have targets. But actually the bigger opportunity is to actually work together in this country between government, business and community. They are the three actors in our society and they're equal but do different things. <clears throat> so with Mike's, Mike's um, with Gumboot Friday, as you as you were talked about there, they did 19,000 counselling sessions for 12,000 kids last year at about $2.5 million from memory. Um, so I've said to them, well, we'll take the money out of the bureaucracy in Wellington and give it to community organisations like them to actually go off and get results because actually they're getting the results uh, better than running some centralised system through Wellington. Now, we will always need acute um, mental health services, don't get me wrong, but actually that's a, that's a good example of what I'm talking about. This, this government believes that they're the parent and business and community sectors are actually the children and that they do everything through Wellington. I want to have an adult-to-adult relationship where, say, government does its thing, but actually community organisations should be powered up, scaled up if they're getting outcomes and results. And so in Mike's case, you look at that and go, that organisation is getting outcomes and results. So why wouldn't we take a dollar out of Wellington give it to them to actually power up and actually get more of those results. Some of your questions, Mike, can you ask Chris Luxon what his plans are to get Wellington moving? Uh, Mike, please revisit the EV subsidy. We want more EVs. Could you ask Mr Luxon, Mike, what he's doing about hospitality? And so the questions go. We'll break for the news and the second hour of our Leader's Breakfast shortly with Christopher Luxon, Leader of the National Party. Want your brand to be heard? We'll put your brand in the right places. In front of the right people. Not a shotgun approach, but right on target. Smart Media. The media unagency. Say hello to the new iPhone 15 Pro, forged in titanium. Experience more immersive mobile gaming with the groundbreaking A17 Pro chip. Capture more detail and colour than ever before with a 48 megapixel main camera and seven Pro lenses. iPhone 15 Pro. So strong, so light, so pro. Get it interest-free on an eligible pay monthly mobile plan with Spark. Order online or in-store. Spark terms and credit criteria apply. Delivery times may vary. Hi folks, David Seymour here. When you vote at this election, forget the politicians' promises. Instead, think of the waste we're saddling our kids with. Think of the businesses ruined by crime. And think of the need to end the division of our country by race. It's not enough to change from red to blue. To ensure that your next government of New Zealand is one of real change, stand with me and Party Vote Act. Authorised by D Smith, 27 Gillies Avenue, Auckland 1023. 
Spend a spooky Halloween with Look Sharp Store. Get ready with their huge selection of costumes and accessories for a spine-chilling makeover. Set the stage with full-size props and decorations. From animated clowns and lawn stakes to life-size skeletons and more to frightening to list. And for a limited time, enjoy 20% off LS brand inflatables and props. Look Sharp Store. Eight scary stores Auckland wide and lookshopstore.co.nz. Far out, so many emails. Claim your inheritance. <laughs> nah, add extra inches. I'm uh, um, good, thanks. <laughs> COVID 19 news. <laughs> Delete. Oh, hang on. Could you be at risk of severe COVID 19? Take the quiz at nomyrisk.co.nz. Severe COVID 19? Well, it felt pretty severe the first time. When you know your risk, you can make a plan. I suppose that makes sense. I better let Dad know too. Nomyrisk.co.nz. Send. Pfizer New Zealand Auckland. At the gym, 80s workout hits. Whereas when I'm cooking, Queens of Country. A playlist for every mood. The new iHeartRadio playlist feature. Endless music, always free. In Auckland on 89.4, this is News Talk ZB. Christopher Luxon on The Leader's Breakfast continues next on the Mike Hosking Breakfast with the Land Rover Defender 130. This is News Talk ZB News. Good morning. It's 8 o'clock. I'm Neva Reddy Manu. Calls for politicians to mobilise the best of humanity rather than the worst in the final weeks before the election. Te Pati Māori has detailed an alleged invasion of 20-year-old candidate Hana Maipi Clark's home, saying it was vandalised and a threatening letter was left. It's alleged to be the third incident at Maipi Clark's home this week. Green Party co-leader Marama Davidson told TVNZ it's horrifying. It has been clear for some time that there are politicians who are whipping up the fear and the racism, appealing to the worst of our humanity instead of the best of it. But ex David Seymour is also saddened by it. There's no place whatsoever for any kind of physical violence. One comment I will make is I think it's wrong to politicise these things. Te Pati Māori have contacted police and they're looking into the matter. Meanwhile, National Leader Christopher Luxon says deciding the future of Police Commissioner Andrew Costa won't be his job if he's elected. He told Mike Hosking he will delegate that decision to his preferred Police Minister, Mark Mitchell. Well, that'll be a decision for him, but I just say to you that we want better results and better outcomes. On the other hand, he says he won't be sacking Reserve Bank Governor Adrian Orr, letting him run out his five-year term. Meanwhile, Labour leader Chris Hipkins is isolating at home with COVID, waiting until he tests negative. Deputies Calvin Davis and Carmel Cipollone will take his place on the campaign trail, and tomorrow's the press leaders' debate is up in the air. Former Labour Chief of Staff Neil Jones says Labour will likely start using online tools more. Things like Facebook Lives, Zoom Town Halls, try and keep momentum that way, but it's much easier to be on the news when you're out and about places and you're actually able to talk about, say, education policy at a school. Auckland's Mayor is pleased with Tataki Auckland Unlimited's move to the Auckland Council building. More than 300 staff at the council-controlled organisation will move in, with 200 staff from Ekepanuku to follow. Council reporter Jacob Jones has more. The move was achieved by consolidating staff already at the council building, which left four floors for the new arrivals. Wayne Brown says it's part of the council's focus on optimising property, with the ultimate goal to get the 17 council sites down to just five by June next year. He says this move alone will save $13 million a year. The beginning of a bright future for Auckland Ferry Services. Explore Group has officially taken over the operation of the Bayswater and Birkenhead Northcote Point ferry routes. Auckland Councillor Chris Darby says this move will provide greater choice when it comes to future contracts with Auckland Transport. We've got to have competitive operators, otherwise we don't get you know the outcomes that we want for our commuters um, and ferry users. Health authorities have confirmed person-to-person transmission of the cryptosporidium gastro illness in Queenstown. There are 56 confirmed cases, 12 probable and 8 under investigation in the Queenstown Lakes outbreak. Te Whatu Order Southern Medical Officer of Health, Dr Susan Jack, says public health is aware of some cases of secondary infection of crypto where people have caught it from people they associate with. She says sharing bathwater can also spread the illness. And that's News Talk ZB News with Southpac Trucks.
To News Talk ZB Sport, the Hawks Bay Rugby Union have voiced their disappointment after Ranfley Shield winning celebrations went awry. Footage on social media showed former All Black halfback Falau Fakatava holding the log of wood in two separate pieces, although he apparently wasn't responsible for the incident. Chief Executive Jay Campbell says after speaking to the parties involved, the damage was caused after a mystery drop onto concrete. Right from the word go, it was a genuine accident. We also spoke to a, another couple of people who were there who hadn't been drinking and it was quite clear that it was a genuine accident. Bunnings NPC with Kennard's hire here to make your job easy. Australia's slim World Cup playoff hopes hinge on Fiji stumbling in the final match of pool play next week against Portugal. The Wallabies have beaten that same Portugal 34-14, giving them a mathematical chance of advancing. Australian captain David Parecki summarises the emotions in camp. It's been a tough week for us, but um, to turn around and get a win like that tonight, I think it's good for our group. You know, just I'm proud of the boys and the way we've stepped up tonight. And also, just want to commend Portugal the, the fight that they showed in the second half. Australia's on 11 points to sit second in Pool C, one ahead of Fiji for now. The greatest team debate is reignited after Penrith's latest NRL League triumph. The Panthers have matched Parramatta's feet from 1981 to 83 in securing three straight premierships after a 26-24 comeback win over Brisbane. The Broncos also won all five grand finals they appeared in between 1992 and 2000. Penrith coach uh, Ivan Cleary sidestepped the discussion. We're not here to, you know, try and explain where we sit in history. I think we'll be able to reflect in the next few days. On, it's been a pretty pretty remarkable achievement and um, we're super, super proud of it. And a nervous but ultimately successful wait for European Ryder Cup golf captain Luke Donald in their 16.5, 11.5 triumph over the United States in Rome. Donald spoken after their opponents came back from their 5.5 point tally before the singles. You just kept looking at the board thinking, you know, where are we going to find 14.5 points? I'm Andrew Alderson and that's News Talk ZB News and Sport to 5 past 8. News Talk ZB Auckland. Time saver traffic. Very good morning. Now, if you're coming in on the southern and moderate to heavy run city bound Mount Wellington through to Newmarket, the northwestern moderate to heavy city bound from Rosebank through to Newton, the northern motorway city bound moderate to heavy and patches Constellation through to Oniwa, northbound light to moderate over the Harbour Bridge. No delays on the southwestern. Avanka Zonich for time saver traffic and travel. News Talk Zebby Weather Watch 24 7 with Mercedes Benz Botany. Guarantee your future value with Agility Finance. Monaco, westerly 15 knots, rising to 20, gusting 30 this morning, turning northwest 20, gusting 30 by the afternoon. And a strong wind advisory, White Mata, the Hodaki Gulf, bring near to Cape Colville. High tide at Auckland, quarter past 10 this morning, Onihunga, 1.30 this afternoon. Today, cloudy periods with patchy morning drizzle, then rain for a time of the evening, possibly heavy. Also, westerly is becoming strong in the afternoon. Today's high 19. Currently, we're sitting on 14 here at News Talk ZB. The policy versus the personality. Christopher Luxon, the leader's breakfast on the Mike Hosking Breakfast with Arvida. Live the age you feel. News Talk ZB. It is seven past eight. It is the Mike Hosking Breakfast uh, Leaders discussion. Uh, one hour left to go. It's funny, I was looking at all the questions. I've split it into half hours. Yeah. And I'm into the third half hour. I'm still on the first hours. <laughs> first I'm half sorry, hours. Mate, is that... Series of questions. No, no, no. You, you, you've done well so far. Let me just tick off a couple of the um, text. Uh, can you ask Christopher Luxon what his plans for Let's Get Wellington Moving? So yeah, we're Wellington gonna kill, hasn't got moving. We're going to get government out of Let's Get Wellington Moving because it's not moving. So we're going to commit just to two things that we're going to take over and, and deal with nationally in the transport plan, which is the Mount Vic Tunnel. We said we'd start construction on that in the end of the first term. Uh, and then obviously that's the bypass around the Basin Reserve. Um, but the rest of it, the council, goes back to the council. They can work out what they want to do. How much is this? This is, this is a, a stupid question, uh, without offending the people who've asked it. Three waters is a dead duck. However, will Luxon stop the funding to councils for 20-minute cities? 20-minute cities, I thought they were 15-minute cities, and this ties in with the World Economic and the UN and all the other conspiratorial... You don't know, know about 15-minute cities? It's, no. it's, all part, it's all part of the yeah. United Nations controlling the world. The question I want to ask you is, how much nuttiness is out there on the campaign trail. Yeah, well, I get hit with that a couple of times in town halls, you know, when I've been out doing these let's get you know back on track sort of tours and stuff. I mean, it's pretty simple. I'm acting in New Zealand's interests, right? That's my job. We've got a hell of a lot of problems to fix and to sort out um, and to solve for. Um, so to be honest, I, I sort of... Um, 
I have to be, you know, being respectful. I just, uh, I just don't buy you know, a lot of that sort of conspiracy theory sort of argument. That do I get. you get asked about it a lot in meetings? I, I get asked occasionally. Yeah, about, is back, is anti, about, is am I a member movement? of the World Economic Forum? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, am I, you know, going to pros- you know, prosecute the uh, UN agenda? Um, and the bottom line is, look. Yeah, honestly, we have major problems in this country, economically, socially, environmentally. I'm trying to solve problems. That's what I've got to do in a very common sense, practical way. Do you believe if you're vaccinated and dead that you emit Bluetooth signals? Uh, no. Um, no. The the person who's number 11 on the list of New Zealand First <laughs> does. Yeah. And you might be dealing with that. that, Does that bother you? Well, that is why I do not want to go with New Zealand first, Mike. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm only picking it up as a last resort to avoid what I think would be uh, an absolute nightmare scenario, which is Labour. Just remember, these guys had three years with an absolute majority, still couldn't get stuff done. If you chuck in two co-leaders from Te Pāti Māori, two co-leaders from the Greens, and Hipkins can't even manage his own cabinet or caucus, you're seriously telling me that's going to take New Zealand forward in the next three years? So I've said I'll pick up the phone to Mr Peters, but tell you, he hasn't gone with us in 27 years, and we remember 2017. Morning, Mike Kirk. Chris, please revisit the EV subsidy. We want more EVs. You say what? And this ties in with what Rishi Sunak said last week when they opened up a the biggest oil field they've opened up in years, and he's pushed back the um, the, the yeah, abandonment of, of ice. Yeah. Do you do you have sympathy for where his view is at, or where the? Question is no, so the question is, you know, saying put the EV subsidies back on. Here's the problem. The EV subsidies were funded from ute tax increases, right? And if you go down and actually see who's buying utes, it's tradies and contractors and farmers who have no alternative vehicles to actually purchase. So they get hit with a tax, and that tax money is supposed to pay for the EV subsidies. The problem is that actually hasn't been enough tax to pay for it, and the government and the taxpayers have been paying almost $300 million to do it. So the issue is this, is that if you talk to the manufacturers and you look at their outlook, they are going to move their production to EVs any Anyway, over time, the customer will probably choose those vehicles. I know you're you're a petrol head uh, and may not like that, but the the upshot is that they will say they're good products and they like going zero to 100 in 2.9 seconds and all that good stuff. Uh, and the issue becomes range anxiety, and that's why we've said is look, we don't need the reverse Robin Hood subsidy because the consumer is going to choose those products anyway. It's going to naturally happen. The manufacturers are moving that way, but the problem is the charging network in New Zealand. So let's take the ultra fast broadband approach, build out a rapid charging network across the country, do it in a proper way uh, and as a result that will be the barrier that actually leads to ad- ad- adoption of more EVs. Okay the mm. super fund this is a technical question but the super fund as a percentage of GDP in terms of debt and what Grant Robertson did it's a, it's a trick it's an accounting trick and they put the value of the super fund in so the percentage of the debt are you going to keep that in or not? Yeah it, it, I think that is the way in which we get more comparability to how other countries so do So what it he did well. was the right <clears throat> thing to do then? I, I think I, I don't have a problem with it. Um, at well all. you did at the time uh, well, I mean, you said it was an accounting trick. Well, it wasn't. It's, it is. It is accounting. It's not actually. Um, it's not economic. It's accounting. Uh, but it, it, I, I'm not averse to that. I think that's actually a good way to make it so it's comparable to how we can compare okay. ourselves to other countries. Competition. Yep. Is there a competition problem in banking? Uh, possibly. That's why I wanted the Finance and Expenditure Committee to do a review of, of bank profitability. Would you still do that? Yep. Or will the Com- Commerce Commission do it for you? Um, well, we, we wanted to do it quickly uh, last year or earlier this year. Um, Robertson didn't want to do it. They then pushed it through to a, I think there's a more there's a more formal review going on. Very interested in that. And is is that enough, it. though? Uh, well, I want to see the findings of it. But I, if there are problems there, we'll deal with that. OK, petrol. Is there a problem in petrol? There's a big problem. We've got an Auckland regional fuel tax that's adding 11.5 cents a litre. Generally speaking, and we've got excise. Ex, um, well, um, here's my frustration, right? This government blames everyone but themselves for inflation. And yes, there, mar- there are structural dynamics in markets, and we have a Commerce Commission that can go through and do that and look at fuel, look at supermarkets, and I guess, and there are issues there. I'm not belittling that. But they blame everything on other things other than their own spending that's created actually that inflation uh, at the supermarket. But, but can, what can, we're not going to do is we're not going to increase excise fuel tax over the three years because we've got to get inflation below 3% again. Uh, and I think those sorts of things will help. Do you th- are you happy with the way the petrol market works, though, in terms of retail petrol market going to a station and they're not just jacking up prices because they can? Yeah, I, I mean, by and large, but I'm, I will constantly monitor those sectors. So whether it's banking or whether it's supermarkets or whether it's so fuel. So that was we'll my keep, next we'll Supermarkets, do you think there's a problem in the supermarkets? Um, yes, and you run into some challenges. And as a result, we've got a grocery commissioner there. We've got a code of conduct. I saw those things get implemented in my old life at Unilever in the UK, for example, which is a very concentrated supermarket uh, market as well. And if they've got the right teeth, it actually can go quite a wee way down the road. And frankly, Mike, if it doesn't work, we go back and we harden it all up. 13 minutes past eight, more shortly from Christopher Luxon. Looking for a rewarding career with great returns? Become an NZ Hose Doctor today. Employed and franchise positions available nationwide. Visit nz.co.nz. 
This election, only a party vote for National can change the government, strengthen our economy, lower your cost of living and deliver you tax relief. Party vote National and let's get our country back on track. Authorised by Jay Dejou, 41 Pepitia Street, Wellington. You can vote now in the general election. Meet up with your friends and whanau and go to a voting place close to home to make it quick and easy. Come on, pup, let's go together. <laughs> Find your nearest voting place at vote.nz or call 0800 36 76 56. Brought to you by the Electoral Commission. Please record your Skinny radio ad after the beep. To keep prices low, Skinny is publishing their radio strip all around the country in the hope that people like me might call the number provided and record them for free, saving Skinny thousands in recording costs. I found the script on their website. How exciting. It's like a nationwide treasure hunt, but without the treasure, because no one's getting paid a cent. Thanks, Skinny, for doing whatever it takes to keep prices low and customers happy. Get the Skinny! Happy, 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 yo! Looking for that unforgettable holiday in paradise? Take that well-deserved holiday in Fiji and beyond with Fiji Airways. Your holiday is closer, more affordable and easier than you think. Enjoy non-stop daily flights direct from Auckland to Fiji. Or enjoy a stopover in Fiji on your way to epic destinations like Singapore, Vancouver, America or the Pacific Islands. Fiji, that's where you want to be. Book now at FijiAirways.com or call your local travel agent today. Put your flooring in the safe hands of Carpet Country, building strong and reliable relationships with their customers for over 24 years. Carpet Country makes your new flooring process easy. With all the best brands, advice and everything you need to make your flooring happen is taken care of. Carpet Country, 43 Car Road, Mount Roskill and online at carpetcountry.co.nz. The best in the Carpet Country. The 100% electric ID4 and ID5 have arrived at Giltrap Volkswagen. With incredible design and groundbreaking electric performance, the new ID4 and ID5 combine SUV usability with the sustainability of an EV. Discover a revolutionary way to drive in the next generation of Volkswagen. To get started on your electric journey, visit Giltrap Volkswagen today. 100 Great North Road, Greylin, or call 09 360 3200 to pre-book your ID test drive. News Talks here, Christopher Luxon with us, 16 minutes past eight. Let's let's rattle through a couple of these things. Oil exploration and licensing, do we bring that back or not? It's yeah, we, we need the oil and gas ban to be reversed oh. because we need it for transit. Transition. How quickly do you do that? Because I asked, I can't remember what it was, Nicola Willis was on the programme a couple of weeks ago and it was some policy release you had made and I said, why isn't it, it was your tax policy actually, yeah. it was your tax cut. Why aren't you generating money to pay for your tax cut? In, in, in an, in, I mean, you haven't convinced anybody that you're going to sell enough houses to the Chinese. Why don't, <laughs> why don't you? Why don't you go get some oil? Yeah, well, I mean, the problem has been that the government sent quite a chilling effect into investors about actually investing in oil and gas. But isn't that what a new government's y- for? Y- yeah, no, oil, but what I'm saying is going to, it's going to take a little bit to start that back up and actually get those investors wanting to do it. Here's the problem: is that when you have a dry year like 2021, you end up actually in, in, importing only decades worth of Indonesian coal. So actually, we need the gas, uh, but we need to have investors that feel confident they're not going to get jerked around again and actually the rules are going to keep changing on them because they're quite big investments that they're making. Okay. Uh, and But we do need gas as a transitory energy source to make that transition. Are there too many pine trees and not enough productive farming land? Yes, there is. And that's why we're going to ban wholesale farm conversions on category one to five land. Six, we'll let it um, have some quota and then seven to eight, do whatever you want to. But I'd, it is changing the nature because the ETS has led to some perverse outcomes that has actually um, led to those wholesale farm conversions, which we're going to ban. Farmers themselves can choose to do whatever they want on 25% of their land. What do you do with the carbon market, which has not sold a single credit all year? Well, that's been a disaster because these guys have actually intervened in it and actually, as you know, went to court and lost that case and actually haven't... I mean, the ETS scheme needs to work. It's got to do a lot of the heavy lifting to bend the emissions curve as we go forward. And so you actually... The polluter should pay. But what you don't do is you don't, don't give $140 million worth of taxpayer money that to That was my next scope. question. That stops corporate welfare. Oh, it's, I mean, it's insane. You've got a $2.1 billion net profit company that does steal in Australia, US, in New Zealand, they hit the New Zealand government up for an ask, and we naively give them $140 million. But, They're going to do it anyway. They should in, be doing in, in it anyway. In talking to the bloke, when he got the money, he said quite categorically, if the government hadn't come to the party, we would not have done it. Well, he should do it. Well, because, should's not good well, enough. No, but if the ETS functioned right, then the penalty is such that that 
changes behaviour so they actually do do it. Okay. Hey, Wakanoa, when does that get sorted? Um, well, um, when do you price it for the farmers, in other words? Uh, in 2030. So, but you've got to do two things before you can price it. You've got to give the farmers the tools, technologies. That's why we're changing the biotech laws around gene editing. You've got to give them credit so they can earn revenue for all the good stuff they're doing, wetlands, riparian planting, and then you introduce sensible agricultural pricing. Do we need more mining in this country? Uh, it's a case-by-case basis. Um, there is good opportunity for us to do you know, if you want to build infrastructure, you know, well, it doesn't make sense to shift, shift gravel all around the country, for example. Um, and I think we can do mining on a case by case basis. One thing this government has done well is free trade deals. You can't argue with that. They've done a very good deal with the UK and they've done a yeah. OK deal with the EU. What do you do? Well, who's left? Um, I think India is the next is that big real? frontier. Yeah, it is. I spoke with um, their foreign minister, Mr. Jay Shankar, uh, when he came out to New Zealand. Um, and it's a country I know quite well. But I mean, two way trade with India has gone from 2.8 down to 2.3 billion, I think, over the time of the government. It's the most populous country on earth, third biggest economy by 2030. The Australians got in during COVID, did an early harvest free trade agreement. So their apples are 50% cheaper than ours, for example. It'd be quite helpful for rocket apples. Difficulty with Australia is, or difficulty for us with Australia is, they've got stuff India wants. We don't. We've got a lot of dairy and a lot of stuff they don't like, yeah, and that's the problem. Maybe, isn't it? but there's also, I think we'll, you know, in a, in a classic old school FTA may be difficult in many of these of these conversations. But actually, we should be building connectivity into these markets and have relationships. I mean, they did it during the middle of COVID. The Canadians, the Europeans, and the Brits have all got well down the road with it. And I bet you we didn't even pick up the phone because we were so inward looking and insular and not actually getting out in the world and hustling and actually doing that stuff. I think a lot of our international relationships have gone cold. You look at international students. Australia, Canada have bounced back. We're probably at half of where we were. Uh, you talked about tourism before at 60%. Others have bounced back completely. Um, you know, we have been way too slow getting out of the blocks, and the rest of the world's leaving us behind. Let's talk about crime in a moment. More shortly, 820. The Leader's Breakfast with Christopher Luxon on the Mike Hosking Breakfast with Arvida. News Talk ZB. Talk ZB headlines. Accusations fly as advanced voting is about to start. Christopher Luxon isn't fussy on where the money comes from to build infrastructure. He wants clarity, though, over government departments with Māori names. Plenty of criticism of Winston Peters, and in sport, the Wallabies keep their mathematical World Cup rugby playoff hopes alive. Small business feeling the squeeze on both sides of the Tasman. You can read more at NZ Herald Premium. News Talk ZB Auckland. Time saver traffic. Good morning. Now to Mount Albert. We've got a breakdown on St. Luke's Road near the Northwestern Motorway. If you can update us, 0800 jammed. The southern moderate to heavy coming in Mount Wellington through to Newmarket. The northern moderate to heavy in Patches City Barn from Sunset Road. The northwestern moderate to heavy from the Causeway. Looking at the southwestern, a light to moderate run northbound between Puanui Road and Portage. A banker's on it for time saver traffic and travel. With the rising cost of living, it seems everything is getting more expensive for hard-working Kiwis. That's why Fujitsu is doing their bit to make home comfort more affordable. Right now, when you install a Fujitsu whole home ducted system with Fujitsu's Cool Finance, you'll pay no deposit and no interest for up to 36 months. Why wait? Fit a Fujitsu. It's New Zealand's favourite air. Fit a Fujitsu. Purchase eligible model by 15th December 23. Domestic and residential only. Fees, terms and conditions including minimum finance amounts apply. Credit by HUM. See fujitsugeneral.co.nz. Stop paying over-the-top prices. Save thousands by shopping online at Trade Depot. Luxurious freestanding bathtubs, just $7.99. Designer vanity, just $5.99. Back-to-wall toilets, just $2.79. LED mirrors, just $1.79. Shop online now at Trade Depot. With minimum spends, you can get free home delivery anywhere nationwide. T's and C's apply. Superior cutting systems, unwavering performance and style for miles. It can only be Cub Cadet, New Zealand's leading ride-on mower brand. Want to know more? Of course you do. That's why they've got a brand new website. Find out everything there is to know about Cub Cadets and explore their range of feature-packed lawn tractors, zero-turn and commercial mowers. Experience the best in class. Signature cut with Cub Cadet. Go on, they dare you. Check out cubcadet.co.nz. Right now, your ears can help your eyes. 
Because if you're not getting relief for your dry eyes, the message is loud and clear. It's time to swap your drops to Novatears. With its silky smooth feel, Novatears lubricates the eye with no blurring and forms a protective layer to prevent excessive tear evaporation. Relieve and protect dry eyes with preservative-free Novatears. Always read the label, use only as directed if symptoms persist to your healthcare professional, AFT Pharmaceuticals Auckland. Now, whether you're looking to buy a home or invest your hard-earned money, you want an established bank with solid foundations, one committed to doing the best for people who bank with them. This is SBS Bank, of course. They've been around for 154 years, roots firmly planted in Kiwi soil. And while North Islanders may never have heard of SBS, the Southerners know and love them. And SBS, owned by its members, proudly keeps its profits here in the country. So when you bank with them, you're helping grow New Zealand. Not to mention, are the reward winning CanStar's Bank of the Year for first-time buyers in 2022-2023, helping New Zealand's newest endangered species, Kiwis, trying to buy their first home. And they haven't forgotten the investors either. Highly competitive rates for investment, so if you're in the market for a home loan or have money you want to invest for great returns, or maybe you just want to move to a bank with a heart, search SBS Bank to find out more. Hosking. The leaders' breakfast. Christopher Luxon with us. In the mood of the boardroom that the Herald did, uh, they rank your front bench. Uh, Nicola Willis comes in at 4.19. Erica Stanford comes in at 4.02. Chris Bishop comes in at 3.6. Shane Retty comes in at 3.6. You come in at 3.3. <laughs> You're being outshone by your own people. How come? Uh, look, I just, I'm just proud that we've got a kick-ass team, to be honest with you. I think we've actually built a really great team. And I'd put Mark Mitchell in there and Simeon Brown and others that are in our front lineup as well and I think that's been one of the great achievements over the last 18 months. But if you go back to what you said at the start of this program and it it all goes top down, it's not going top down here. The team beats you. How come? Uh, Well look, I mean I think it's always, uh, it's not an uncommon thing that you actually see uh, the leaders of the parties do worse than uh, their finance post people in particular on the mood of the boardroom stuff Uh, but what I'd just say is you know, my job is to actually assemble a team and actually I think politics is a team sport, it's not an individual game Um, it's a way I build executive teams in my past life and it's the way we're going to do this as, as well. A couple of quickies. Winter warmer payments, stay or go? Uh, it definitely stays, yep. And okay, that's, why, that's important. Why, why are you giving people with lots of money more money they don't need to heat their house? Yeah, look, I think it's a scheme that by and large works and I want people to know they're going to well, keep Well, of course it, it works. It's, yep. free, it's free money and you, and you don't have any money. <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. I, I don't need your help, yep, but no, you're going to no, give I, it to me anyway. It makes no sense. I think for our seniors, uh, that's an entitlement we can give them. Yep. Okay, school lunches. Yeah, uh, we're going to keep that program, but I am concerned about the effectiveness of it and waste in it, and I wonder um, whether we can get the same outcome with well, we need more than wonder. What are you actually going to do with it? You've well, got kids who don't need lunches, some kids who do need lunches but don't get them yep. because the kids who don't need lunches do. Yeah, well, there's a bit of waste in the system when I go around and talk to schools about it. But I'm, all I'm saying is I think the school lunch program, we support that. Um, we Can we deliver it better and make it more effective? Absolutely, I suspect. Are you worried waste. about our dollar? Um, well, uh, uh, um, I am, but um, there's not, I mean, basically it's about us getting good economic management in place. And when you look at a current account deficit of $30 billion, the most it's been since the mid-70s, um, something that is incredibly worrying, um, that is not great. And so that's why we've got to get out, get exporting to the world, get hustling, get out in the world again and stop paying. Can you in your first term promise us that in some way, shape or form in terms of exporting to the world, that will materially change? Because I, I don't see what, the it's not the government's fault. The fact that somebody doesn't want to buy a block, bit of land in London the way yeah. they used to is not the government's fault or is it? Well I actually think the government does play a role to actually open up those markets and actually support our business people and give them confidence to go into those markets. If you think about our business community it understood Japan pretty well in the 80s and the 90s obviously with the FTA in 08 it's actually built out a huge business in China and we understand the Chinese market pretty well. I think the government has a big job to be very externally oriented to be out there hustling in the world and actually taking the business people with us so we can open up doors and then it's actually for the business community to actually build their literacy in places like Indonesia and Southeast Asia and India and the UK and the EU. And so it's giving them confidence that we actually want them to succeed and saying, okay. well, in government, what can I do? Well, I can actually open up doors. And I went on a number of trade missions, you know, um, back in the day when with, with John Key and Bill English. And, you know, that's what was important. OK, we haven't talked about crime. We will rectify that directly after the news, which is next. 
biggest rugby league event since the 2017 World Cup is here. Don't miss the blockbuster triple header between New Zealand, Samoa and Tonga. It's all going down at Tamaki Makoto, Auckland's Eden Park on October 21st. The Kiwis will face Samoa. The Kiwi Ferns will line up against Tonga. And an NZ Kiwi A team will assemble for the first time in 17 years. A full day of culture, code and an unmatched atmosphere this Labor weekend. Ticket selling fast. Get yours from Ticketek. Have you checked out Family First's Voter Guide website yet? Go to valueyourvote.nz. We ask all the leaders of the political parties what their views are on the anti-smacking law, three strikes law, hate speech legislation, critical race theory being taught in schools, whether gender is separate from biological sex and other issues. We also ask that real tricky question, what is a woman? Check out their responses. Go to valueyourvote.nz. That's valueyourvote.nz. Authorised by Family First 28 Davies Ave, Manukau City. Hi, Stephen here from Ian Hunt Flooring. Come and see one of our best-selling products, Jacobson Textured Loop Pile Carpet. Homeowners love its look and durability. Love the loop at Ian Hunt Flooring, Albany and Mount Wellington. Ian Hunt Flooring. Bank said no to a home loan? Talk to us at Pepper Money. We're a non-bank lender with a more flexible approach to lending. We specialise in finding options you may not get from traditional lenders. And if we can find a way to help, we will. Looking for a real-life attitude to home loan options? Talk to Pepper Money. Loan applications are subject to responsible lending checks based on your individual circumstances. Terms, conditions, fees and loan eligibility criteria apply. Our financial services provider number is 660011. Hiring staff for your team or business is a never-ending nightmare, costing way too much time and money. We're all tightening our belts these days, so with zero placement fees, Join is a proven system that can save you thousands. Join's extensive network of specialist recruiters across New Zealand means you can partner with your own dedicated recruiter today. Join the hundreds of smart Kiwi businesses who use Join to hire great people. Go to join, joyn.co.nz. Countdown is changing to Woolworths and you'll see changes for the better with low price on things we depend on like Countdown pre-packed brown onions 1.5kg just $3.80 for weeks and weeks. Low price. A fresh way to save from Countdown. Christopher Luxon on The Leader's Breakfast continues next on The Mike Hosking Breakfast with Bailey's Real Estate. This is News Talk ZB News. Good morning. It's 8.30. I'm Neva Reti Manu. National leader Christopher Luxon says he wants a dual language approach to government departments, but says English needs to come first. He told Mike Hosking it's frustrating that a lot of departments have been renamed without English prominent. When you genuinely have people coming up to you and saying, oh, Chris, I don't know what Te Pukinga is versus mm. Fata Oro versus Waka Kotahi, I think we owe it to them to make that really clear that that is the Transport Agency, Health New Zealand and, and the Polytechnics. And- And Luxon says he's not fussy on where the country's money is coming from to build infrastructure. He didn't rule out taking money from China as he spoke to Mike Hosking. Do you like Chinese money or not? Do Um, you worry about the Chinese? um, Well, that's a that's a different issue. I mean, it was. Is it? It's not. Why? I mean, well, I mean, I'll I'll take. I I want money and foreign investment. Meanwhile, Winston Peters isn't apologising for comments made on TVNZ's Q&A. Appearing on the show yesterday, Peters hit out at host Jack Tame, at one point calling him a dirt merchant. He accused Tame of being corrupt, suggesting his, quote, masters were trying to get rid of New Zealand first. Labour's Broadcasting Minister Willie Jackson's called it astonishing abuse from Peters, despite last year having to apologise for his conduct on the same programme. The New Zealand First leader told TV3 he was asked to speak on four matters and barely one was covered, which he calls deceit. If you say, I want you to come along and speak about these four things, at least cover them and not use it as a chance to get someone in and then try and hijack them with a personal attack, which went on and on and on and on. And there are calls for politicians to mobilise the best of humanity rather than the worst in the final weeks before the election. Te Pati Māori has detailed an alleged invasion of 20-year-old candidate Hana Maipi Clark's home, saying it was vandalised and a threatening letter was left. It's alleged to be the third incident at Maipi Clark's home this week. Green Party co-leader Marama Davidson says it's been clear for some time that some politicians have been whipping up racism. Ex-David Seymour says there's no place for any kind of physical violence, but it's wrong to politicise these things. Te Pati Māori has contacted police and they're looking into the matter. 
Two people have died in Sydney after attending music festivals and a further 10 have been hospitalised. Police say the combination of festivals, drugs and heat can have horrible consequences. Nine News reporter Eddie Meyer says police charge more than 70 with drug offences and another eight with supplying drugs. The deaths and hospitalisations have again raised the debate about pill testing at festivals, particularly after New South Wales Health issued warnings about high-dose MDMA tablets circulating... A nightclub blaze in Spain has killed at least 13 people. The fire tore through three venues in the southeast town of Murcia. 14 people are still missing. Sky News reporter Emmy, Emma Burton says that the fire began at a venue called Fonda before spreading to the neighbouring Teatro nightclub. A third venue called Golden also caught light, with more than 40 firefighters called to the scene as crowds gathered outside while smoke billowed from the buildings. And the official death toll from a fatal mining accident in Zimbabwe has risen to 13 after the government gave up hopes of finding four missing miners still alive. That's News Talk ZB News with Southpac Trucks, distributors of hard-working luxury DAF trucks. The News Talk ZB Sport. United States Ryder Cup golf captain Zach Johnson's been left to lament their loss to Europe. The hosts have won back the trophy 16.5 points to 11.5. The singles were shared six all, but Europe dominated the opening two days. Johnson's struggling to comprehend the result. I don't even know where I'd start or end on that. It's just too fresh, too raw. I mean, there's my competitive juices are probably still flowing too much. They even find a synopsis or even have the brain waves to function right now. In contrast, a Colonel Sanders doppelganger celebrated the occasion by tearing across the course, resplendent in ivory chinos, crisp white shirt and asparagus-coloured cheese cutter to dive into the lake. Meanwhile, on a bus somewhere in the vicinity of Rome, led by Rory McElroy and Shane Lowry... Golf coverage with Crown. There's nothing like a new Crown, simply the best. Richie Mwanga is lauding the influence of a fellow playmaker, albeit from a different rugby code. The All Blacks media session overnight in Lyon was held a couple of minutes after Penrith stormed back to beat Brisbane 26-24 in the NRL League decider. Mwanga says Panthers halfback Nathan Cleary's performance was astounding. Just in awe of um, you know, Penrith and their dominance over the last couple of years. And just pretty cool, like you don't get often a father and son sort of dominance like that. What Cleary's able to do, lead his team, it's pretty inspirational. Man of the match, Cleary helped guide them from a deficit of 24-8 with 18 minutes remaining to a third straight premiership. The last team to complete the feat was Parramatta in 1983. Australia's slim uh, World Cup rugby playoff hopes hinge on Fiji stumbling in the final match of pool play next week against Portugal. The Wallabies have beaten that same Portugal 34-14, giving them a mathematical chance of advancing from Group C. And Hawke's Bay Union boss Jay Campbell has condemned his magpie players after a video circulating on social media showing the Ramfilly Shield split in two, allegedly from a mysterious drop onto a concrete kitchen floor. I'm Andrew Alderson and that's News Talk ZB News and Sport, 2.25 minutes to nine. News Talk ZB Auckland, time save the train. Good morning. Now to Mount Albert, a breakdown on St Luke's Road near the Northwestern Motorway. If you can update us, 0800 jammed. Southwestern is flowing well, the Northwestern city bound moderate TV from St Luke's. Southern Motorway moderate TV city bound from Mount Wellington. The northern northbound moderate over the Harbour Bridge city bound moderate TV at Esmond. Ivanka Zonich for time saver traffic and travel. News Talk ZB Weather Watch 24 7 with Mercedes Benz Botany. Guarantee your future value with Agility Finance. Monaco, westerly 15 knots, rising to 20, gusting 30 this morning, turning northwest 20, gusting 30 by the afternoon, becoming southwest 20 overnight. And a strong wind advisory, Waitamata, the Hodaki Gulf, and Bremen to Cape Colville. High tide at Auckland, quarter past 10 this morning, then 20 to 11 tonight, and at Onihunga, 1.30 this afternoon. Today, cloudy period with patchy morning drizzle, then rain for a time in the evening, possibly heavy. Also westerlies becoming strong in the afternoon. Today's high 19, tonight's low 11. Currently, we're sitting on 15 here at News Talk ZB. 
Christopher Luxon in the hot seat. It's the Leaders Breakfast on the Mike Hosking Breakfast with the Land Rover Defender 130. Adventure now seats eight. News Talk ZB. 23 minutes away from nine. We're on the home stretch of our first of our Leaders Breakfast. This time next week we'll do, be doing Christopher Hipkins, Chris Hipkins, and on Thursday we'll do the minor parties. For now it is Chris Luxon. So let's deal with um, crime, justice and all of that. Yep. Do judges hide behind the Sentencing Act? Uh, yes, I think so, and I think also we're going to limit. We, we are definitely going to limit the amount of sentencing discounts they apply because we've seen some pretty perverse cases. Someone does a violent crime, should be three years in jail, ends up with five months home detention. You've seen discounts of up to eighty-five percent. So we're going to cap that uh, and actually say, there, yeah, there'll be unique circumstances. Yes, each case is different. Yeah, get all that, but actually we've got to cap that. We're also not going to we're going to stop funding these cultural reports because it's a real cottage industry, third-party thing, and we want to give that money to victims in the court system. Um, and yeah. And that's what we've got to do make you sure. need to, by doing that? Do you need to change the sentencing act, or can you do it without changing the sentencing? Um, act? I, I think we we'll possibly will need to look at the sentencing act, absolutely, and make sure that we can actually put a cap in place so that judges actually can't discount further than say forty percent or whatever number. Should we be able to criticise or ask questions of judges? Um, well, I think we, everyone's free to do that. Um, well, no, they're not, because I've asked any number of government ministers uh, a number of times about judges and decisions, and they won't go there. They won't. Yeah, they, they the say there's, there's, the there's, there's, exactly. Yep, yep. But I think the thing that we can sort out is actually say sorry, but we're not going to have discounting on the scale that we've seen, okay. um, and we're not going to fund cultural reports, which is actually a means by which you get some of those discounts. Actually, and it's actually done by third, what was intended to be with those reports, versus to give some background information about an individual. But actually, now it's being used as a way in which um, people actually get off stronger sentences. And that's under, right. under your leadership, does a person who was the other day uh, on Home D with a bracelet around his ankle, charged with murder, mm-hmm. get to have Home D? No. Under no, no circumstances no. does a person who is charged with murder no. get Home D under your leadership? There's got to be, you know, Mark and I have talked a lot about that. It's just, you know, what's they're major offences, <laughs> serious violent offences, and we're putting people on home detention. You've got to be, you know, serious. But let's be clear where it's come from. This is a government that said one goal, 30% reduction in the prison population. That'd be fine. All your listeners would say, that's great if we had a 30% reduction in crime. Hasn't happened. But as a result, the message gets sent very clearly from the top that actually we don't want, uh, you know, it, it filters down through the system and essentially you end up with much weaker sentencing. Right. One of the things we started at the program was that you're limited financially with what you're able to do for yep. at least the first term. You're limited in numbers for the police. So the police policy came out the other day. There's another 300 police coming and that matches what Labor's did and you clearly stole their numbers as well. That doesn't solve in and of itself what's happened crime-wise and justice-wise in this country. Does it or does it? Well, it helps. I mean, if you think about downtown Auckland, for example, I look at the deterioration that we've seen there over, say, the last two and a half, three years. You know, you walk around the bottom end of Queen Street, you've got, um, you know, we've seen yeah, pretty much, you know, uh, people getting beat up outside the ferry terminal. Uh, you walk around there, people not feeling safe, uh, all of those things. So what we wanted with those 300 police officers is actually to put them on those hot spots to make our police more visible where we've got real pressures in our major cities and towns. Um, but look, I think we we can. I mean, I think we've got to send a message very clearly that actually uh, this is a government that's been soft on crime. But I'm sorry, but every the problem is this, Mike, is every six months we're seeing more frequency, um, more open, uh, gratuitous, violent crime happening in this country. All of a sudden we get we get sensitised to the fact, or desensitised to the fact that gang members are going to be fighting in the middle of the day. There's a ram raid happening at 12 o'clock at the base mall in in, um, in Hamilton, uh, and Michael Hill's jewellery store. You know, we just start to accept that that's how it is. Well, I don't think we have to accept that that's how it is. And you have to have a message to say, look, there's got to be consequences. So that's why we're saying tackle the gangs, you know, yep, actually serious young offenders. We're going to have it, we're going to do it different, do it differently. And so in your first term, you'll be able to, once again, you'll be able to come on this program and I'll present you with facts and figures and you statistics will, yep. and, and you will be able to show us, we will be able to see for ourselves that crime is down, violence is down, ram raids are down, all of the problems. It has to. It has no, to. I know it has to, yep. but you're the one responsible for delivering. Yeah, you I will am. be able to deliver in the first term materially an improvement in all these issues. We have to have a big improvement in crime in that first term. But I'd also say to you, I want us to get into a mode where we're actually pretty straight up and up front about, well, what are we trying to achieve? Because when I sit down with the government and say, well, actually violent crime's up 30% and retail crime's up 100% and gang membership's up 70% and there's a ram rate every you know 11 hours in this country, um, you know, those are the outcomes. Those are the ways we should be defining you know what's actually happening because those things are what impacts people's daily lives. So if we're not making enough progress, let's talk about that too and what else we we could be doing to solve that problem. Let's focus on outcomes. Um, that is the problem I've observed in two and a half years in politics is 
Government, this government has lots of solutions and ideology that goes roaming around in search of a problem. But in my world, you define a problem and then you put common sense, practical ideas to deal with it. Our if remaining, it's not working, let's say it's not working and be upfront about it and so try something different. Our remaining moments with Chris Luxon, 18 minutes away from nine. Hey Mac, how are you doing? Yeah, good, good. Almost finished, I think. Mac's on PinnacleLife.co.nz, using Pinnacle Life's multi-award winning advice tool to work out what kind of life insurance might suit him. Wow, OK, that's done. OK, done. You're done? Yeah. Apparently I should look at um, life insurance and critical illness cover. Yeah. <laughs> Easy as that, I guess. Just a few clicks and some simple questions. Nice. PinnacleLife.co.nz the demand for technology, transformation and digital professionals is strong right across New Zealand. Let Beyond Recruitment help you find your next job or if you're an employer, your next amazing IT staff member. Visit beyondrecruitment.co.nz Friends or whānau coming to New Zealand? Let them know they'll need to do a New Zealand Traveller Declaration. Go to travellerdeclaration.govt.nz to find out more. Say goodbye to one-off discount days and hello to everyday fuel savings. Just fill up with the Wicked Waitomo app to unlock a bang for your buck. With every $20 or more you spend, you'll unlock bigger fuel discounts off everyday low prices. Sweet Waitomo, Kiwis Fuel and Kiwis with fairer fuel prices. This land's a gift to you and me. Have you checked out Family First's Voter Guide website yet? Go to valueyourvote.nz. We ask all the leaders of the political parties what their views are on the anti-smacking law, three strikes law, hate speech legislation, critical race theory being taught in schools, whether gender is separate from biological sex and other issues. We also ask that real tricky question, what is a woman? Check out their responses. Go to valueyourvote.nz. That's valueyourvote.nz. Authorised by Family First 28 Davies Ave, Manukau City. Ever wondered what goes on at those Booper retirement villages? Come on down to the Booper Spring Open Day this Saturday. You can have a sticky beak at the apartments or villas and don't forget to check out our gardens. Plus, when you come, we'll give you a complimentary potted plant for your own garden. T's and C's apply, of course. The doors are open from 10 till 2 p.m. So find your nearest Booper village by heading to booper.co.nz. That's B-U-P-A.co.nz. There's one more pool game in Rugby World Cup 2023 for our All Blacks before the quarterfinals. Can they round out the pool matches with one more win? The All Blacks' final challenger before the quarterfinals. Uruguay. Listen to News Talk ZB for updates and Gold Sport for live commentary. Friday morning from 8, Rugby World Cup 2023 with Access Solutions on iHeartRadio, Gold Sport and News Talk ZB. Official radio broadcasters of Rugby World Cup 2023. News Talk ZB, uh, Leaders Breakfast, Christopher Luxon, our final moments. Just a couple of personal things without mm. getting to this whole business of the, the, the debate. What do you think of the debates, by the way? I came to the conclusion, I've watched the two main ones so far. I watched the Republican one last week. I wonder if we are done with debates. I wonder if they actually serve any true purpose. Look, I think they're part of a campaign, but I think yeah, there's a lot of hype and a lot of uh, you know everyone puts a lot of store on them. But I actually think there's a lot more going on. And as I've said before, um, you know, going into this whole process, it's the first time I've done debates. Frankly, um, the country doesn't need a great debater; it needs a great manager and a great leader. Uh, and I think people actually say, yeah, it's a piece of how I get a sense of who Chris Luxon is or who Chris Hipkins is. Uh, for me, as a leader of the opposition, it's a chance people get to see you a bit more um, than what you'd normally get as an opportunity or oxygen in, in the mm. media environment. Uh, but it's it's a piece of it. It's not all of the be all and end. What pl- value do you place on town hall meetings? I, I really like that a lot, and I, I started doing that from day one as a leader because. I, to be honest, I tried to get out of Wellington as quickly as I could because I think there's a, so much bubble beltway thinking that actually is a paradigm that just, just just drives all the thinking. And actually they just keep you in touch with real people and what's going on. I suspect it's not that different from being a, a talk show host. You actually hear what people are actually saying and thinking and their worries and their concerns. And so for me, I really en- I've really enjoyed that and I'll, you know, I really continue to do that. The, the criticism that you're too bland... Yeah, well, I mean, um, I think people. I mean, I don't think I am, but I'm, I'm a I'm a consistent sort of even tempered sort of individual. Um, but um, you know, I guess people make their own decisions about that. But I think I'm pretty clear about why I've come to politics is because I'm frustrated the country's not realising its potential. Are we seeing all there is to you? 
Uh, I suspect not, uh, in the sense of... Why then haven't we seen more? Well, I mean, until I actually get to do the job, people will see me in that job and, and understand what I'm there to do and what I'm trying to do. Um, I think the country needs a serious turnaround. I am deeply worried about the direction that we're going in. Um, that's what I. That's why I came uh, you know, two and a half years ago, because I actually want to get in and actually sort this stuff out. I do, do want to go to work on it. So the polls that have you, uh, one poll's got you even with Chris Hipkins in terms of preferred Prime Minister, the other one's got you a little bit in the lead, but neither of you have set the world on fire. You just don't seem rock stars. Why not? Well, I mean, um, I, I don't know. There, there'll be something for people. I've, uh, let's be clear. I mean, I've come through incredibly quick through the system, uh, you know, in terms of the leadership of the party and then uh, into the campaign. Uh, but, uh, you know, I personally don't think, you know, I've got the real world leadership experience that New Zealand kind of needs. Yep, I'm not a career politician. Yep, I'll mangle things and not get it perfect every time. Yep, um, there's lots that I've been learning over that last 18 months in particular, and I'll continue to learn lots. Uh, but actually, I tell you, I think the country needs um, someone from outside to actually come in with a different approach to how we get things done. And that's what I'm, that's what I want to do. We're doing a turnaround job here. What are your limitations? Um, well, I mean, um, for me, it's sort of um, you know, this uh, you know, what, what are the limitations? I guess it's just the fact of how do I how do I manage time and how do I stay focused on priorities and what's the so most. So you were important struggling stuff? with the answer to that question. Do you think you have no limitations and you're brilliant? No, no, I don't, no, I don't. But I think I, I'm pretty hard charging and I'm quite a perfectionist, and so um, I run hard uh, on myself uh, as well as I expect my team to deliver as well. Uh, and you know, that's. Um, you know, can ch- be challenging at times. Tell me about your faith and where that fits in. Yeah, well, it's kind of it's personal. I mean, it's been frustrating because it's been misrepresented. Frankly, people want to label it as about this and it's about that, and the projected what is stuff it about? onto it. Well, it's just basically about a set of values and actually how you treat people uh, and how you actually help people. I was raised in a family where. My mum's a counsellor, therapist. Um, my bro- younger brother's a social worker. We were out, you know, we were just taught to, to treat people well and help people. Um, and so it's walk across the room, talk to someone different from you, understand what their life's about and, and work out what you can do to help. Uh, and so it's about how you treat people is what is, my is faith's about. Is that faith or is that just being a decent person? Well, in my case, that's how my faith, well, that's what it does for me. Is it, It's personal to me, but it's actually how I treat people. Um, I look at, you know, and, and that's what it's been about. How do you be ruthless but treat them well? Um, well, you stay very, very focused on the outcomes and what you're there to deliver and what you're there to you know to do. And I did that at Air New Zealand. I did it at Unilever. I did it at other places around 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 you know in my, in my working life. It's the same thing. You stay very focused on the mission and the, and what you're trying to achieve. We want to build the, the you know one of the leading advanced countries in the world, small countries in the world. Um, we know we've got massive work ahead of us, um, but that's the grand grand project that we're all signing up for. Um, and you keep people focused on delivering against that. How different is the corporate world to poli- uh, politics? Uh, it is different. There are some bits that are, are very similar. Uh, what similar? Uh, the, the leadership side of it is very similar, I think. I think it's very transferable uh, into political life. Yes, there's different content that you're trying to master. There's a different process by which you get things done. But actually, it's it's that, that transition hasn't surprised me at all. You know, As I thought about coming into political life from the background that I've had, I think a lot of corporate people fail because actually if you don't have a political read or feel, um, you can actually just think there's just one way to do it and you get very frustrated and you run into a brick wall and mm. nothing gets changed. Um, but for me, I think a lot of the leadership stuff's important. You know, For example, you know, the National Party was pretty dysfunctional, let's be clear, a year after our last election result, which was one of our worst. Um, but actually, you've got to get that team together and say, that's the team we've got. Let's fashion it in. Let's get the right people on the right assignments. Let's get them gelling, working as a team. We did that pretty quickly. As a result, is that your proudest achievement so far? You stopped the leaking. Uh, well, I think it's just re- we've rebuilt the party, and we've actually yeah. got the party but playing is that your as a proudest team. achievement so far. Well, it, well, it's critical because if I couldn't do that, then you know, if you can't lead yourself and you can't lead the party, then why the hell would people trust you to lead the country? You know, it's that simple, right? It's that elemental. Mm. Um, and then once we did that job right and quickly, and we had the real straight up chats about how we want things to be and what are we here to do, and we can punch each other out all day long, and we can actually focus on what we're supposed to be doing, which is the New Zealand people. Then we were able to focus in, in the second stage on sort of holding the government to account because we weren't doing that job very effectively. And then this year has been, you know, actually moving on and actually pre- presenting our ideas to take a country forward. And we're doing that turnaround in a very compressed time. I, I actually think my political situation is more like David Cameron in, in 05, you know, followed a set of leaders that had been very successful in Key and English or Thatcher and Major, and then had a period of Brown and Blair or Ardern and Robertson and Hipkins. And then, you know, you've actually got to make your party competitive and electable and modern and 
and relevant. Um, and you know they normally have five years to do that, and uh, and we've done that in a very compressed time. So that's been you know I think that's been a proud achievement because we do have a great country. We have so much potential, and that's why we've got to go get it done. Final word in a moment. Eight away from nine. News Talk ZB Auckland. Time saver traffic. With mobile service, Hyperdrive brings the tyre store to you. Good morning. Now we've got a breakdown in Mount Albert on St Luke's Road near the northwestern. If you can update us, 0800 jammed. Uh, moderate to heavy but gradually easing on the northern city bound at Esmond. Moderate to heavy on the southern motorway city bound Mount Wellington through to Green Lane. Hyperdrive's mobile tyre fitting vans comes right to your doorstep, office or wherever you are. Spruce your backyard for spring at Trade Tested. Smash the winter grime with a Kaja Water Blaster. Get a Hyundai Chipper in to shred the branches or deal to the weeds with a fancy Greenworks electric garden sprayer. Be first up, best dressed this spring at Trade Tested. Ooh, the duck breast is crisp and smoky, but the slow cooked beef cheeks meltingly tender. Oh man, it's all so good. Dine out at Sky City and feel it. Sky City. I haven't voted before because I feel like my voice isn't heard. But I'm not the only one. If we all had a say. On the issues that matter to us. And our communities. That would be powerful, right? Yep. Let's make our voices heard by voting in this year's general election. Brought to you by the Electoral Commission. What does Two Degrees Business bring to the table? Well, we've still got our world-class, full-service networks, nationwide coverage, and great service. But now we've added more with our smart software solutions, designed to make changes in real time. So rather than just running your business, control it. We've grown our business to help yours do more. See what our smart business solutions bring to the table. Two Degrees, fighting for fear for Kiwi business. Coverage available in 98.5% of areas where Kiwis live and work iHeartRadio has a playlist for everyone. You want rock? It's there. Classical? Got it. You want artists like Ed Sheeran? We got that too. iHeartRadio playlists. Endless music, always free. It's the final days of No Limits and your massive sellout. Massive savings on thousands of products from leading brands. TVs, whiteware, computers, smartphones, small appliances, plus loads more. Price to sell out. Big brands, hot prices. Hurry, ends Tuesday at No Leaming. Conditions apply. The Leader's Breakfast with Christopher Luxon on the Mike Hosking Breakfast with the Land Rover Defender 130. News Talk ZB. One more question and then you get the final. So I've actually asked it of you before and this is one I couldn't work out. When Adun asked you all those years ago to head up your business committee and she was pretending that she wanted to hear from business, you got sucked in. You fell for that. If you thought that Adun was what I thought she was, which was vacuous. Why did you fall for it? Well, I did it because actually I'm old-fashioned. I think if any prime minister or any president asks you to do something, you know, you, you should you should step up to the plate and do it. And I assembled, you know, 13 outstanding CEOs in that group that represented public, private businesses, small, large, different sectors, all that good stuff. And we generally went into that with a really good mindset of actually. Did you to... honestly believe you were going to be listened to and you could make some change? Well, I hoped I was. That ah, was yeah. You hoped versus you yeah. believed. Uh, They're two different things. No, I genuinely hoped because it was the first time we'd done something like that before and it was obvious the country didn't have a, you know, the government frankly didn't have it very gripped up in a business or a commercial sense. Mm. Uh, And I, you know, if you go back and look at the ideas that we had about how to practically sort out education and infrastructure and all those things, actually a lot of that is policy ideas that we're now putting in place in the National Party with some of our ideas. So, you know, I think, you know, I get it, you know, it's, um, you, you know, in those roles I felt I had a responsibility and when you get called up on a Sunday afternoon to say, would you do it? I think you say yes to any Prime Minister or President, Frank, and you try. You try. We've only got 30 seconds left. You're out early voting today. Yep. Have you worked out who you're voting for? Yeah, you have. There's a very good guy out there in Botany. When does the campaign essentially, given that, last time it was two-thirds of people voted well before Election Day, yeah. when's the campaign over? Uh, well, I, you know, we're, we've got two weeks to go, right? We've got no, I, I go. get that part, yeah. but you've got to have sold yourself by when? This Wednesday, this Thursday? I mean, once they've voted, they're well, not I think once they start mind. voting, you know, you know, that's what I say. I mean, it's a bit odd that Hipkins is saying the campaign's just getting going last week, and it's like, well, actually, early voting starting today. Uh, and I think there'll be a lot of people getting out and wanting to get this thing over and done with and actually uh, you know, lock in their vote and actually say where they want to go. So that's why we've been essentially campaigning all year to say we've got the ideas to take the country forward with. And, you know, my... my 
you know, look, my motivation for doing this job is like, we honestly have a kick-ass country. We have a fantastic country, lots of potential, but we're not realising it. We're not realising it. I've enjoyed the last two hours. It's been fun. Thank you, mate. It's good. No worries. It's nice to meet you. And uh, yeah, nice to meet you too. Yeah. Uh, Chris Luxon, leader of the National Party. This time next week, it'll be Christopher Hipkins, who's the leader of the Labour Party. And this Thursday, a couple of the minor players as well. So this has been the first for 2023. Uh, You get used to these because I've done a few. (laughs) You might be back in 2026. You never know. Well, I know you're going to hold me to account going forward. I will be holding you to account. No worries. (laughs) Uh, We're back tomorrow morning at six. As always, happy days. Introducing the new smoked chicken croissant at Robert Harris Cafes. Made with creamy brie, spinach and zesty sun-dried tomatoes nestled in a warm croissant. Yours for just $15. Head to your local Robert Harris Cafe. Hurry, won't last long. ITM's Toolbox Top-Up Sale is back. Get your hands on all the biggest brands with massive tool deals, like our Makita bonus battery offer, because we know yours always.